Hey, Ms. Pendleton, good morning and welcome again to Spain Park High School. In today's game one doubleheader between the Northridge Jaguars and the Spain Park Jaguars. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would ask that you please rise and direct your attention to left center field as we honor America and those who protect her as we play our national anthem. Hello, hello, there we go, folks. How are you doing today? So, sorry, a little late getting set up this morning with the weather, but it's going to be a beautiful day out here at Spain Park High School. Starting pitcher today is Patrick McQueenie, the lefty. So, Patrick's pitched well for the Jaguars this year, had one rough outing, but it really wasn't a rough outing on him as it was, uh, I think he gave up five runs at Gulf Shores and none of them were earned. So, tough to pitch when your defense isn't doing it for you. So, but. Patrick's really held himself well on the mound this year, so excited to see him pitch today here against. We got the Jaguars versus the Jaguars. So the Northridge Jaguars from Tuscaloosa coming on against the Spain Park Jaguars from Hoover, Alabama. Strike one right out of the gate. You love to see that. A great way to open up a Saturday after day full of rain and then the sun's finally just broke out at game time here. Strike low. Good to see the umpires calling that strike today. You gotta love that. It's especially if you're the pitching coach who was also the head coach today, folks, that uh, 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 he's also the head coach today. Uh, Coach Smith feeling a little under the weather. Maybe he's watching.
Going to be foul ball down the line. Richard Moon all over it if it was fair, but uh, we'll reset and do it again here. One ball, two strikes. Nobody on here in the top of the first. Ground ball, Aiden Burke uh, gets past him, try to get down for it. I'll put a runner on first there. Take off the baseball chatter since Rick's not here yet. Can't have. It's going to be a ball. Swing and a miss. Nice pitch, like coming up with a little bit of. Checks him back, throws the pick. A little high. Good job by James Batters. We can go climb the ladder, get it. Runner goes. Coleman lost the handle on a little, still a little slippery out here. Uh, so he is going to. Uh, Rose moves advance to the second. I'll get it updated here in a minute, folks. So we got one ball, two strikes. That one shouldn't be. Mr. ESPN shows. Good morning, George. Good morning. How are you today, sir? Yeah, there you go. You got your volume. You got all your volumes there for you. So, all right. We went professional today. I knew you were coming after all the crap you were giving me last night. Oh. Ah. Moon. The young lefty's on the mound. Yeah. Good looking pitch. There right it is, there. nice pitch. The umpire just said since you, since you decided to show up late, and I can put our baseball chatter logo back up there now. But uh, since you decided to show up late, um, we uh, the um, uh, he is given a low strike today, so we're we're good there. You should be happy with that, Ricky. I'm very happy with that. Hopefully, he only gives it to us pitching. So one out now. Runner on second still. There it goes. Go. Nice He's step. Out. He's out. Oh. I don't know, Rick. It looked like it was close, but uh, it was a great job by Coleman. Yeah, I've been impressed with Coleman all year. He really went behind the batter nicely there and threw, threw it to a good – I mean – Well, Richard he, Richard Moon knew that was an out. He 100% knew that was did an he? out. Yeah. So that was a, a, a great, great, great um, – then again, it was a great throw right there. Got it, it, it was a base. I, tell, I told you last week that uh, – Coleman's throwing is the biggest improvement, I think, on this whole team this year. You think? Yeah, I, I do. Oh, wow, he just went right over the top of it. Oops. What? What is Northridge, a 5A school? Up to bat, number 23, Jack Sanderson. I don't know, Rick. I will check that out for you here in a minute. One run on the board for Northridge, and they've, that's what they've had, two diving hits, one to the right of Aiden Burke, one to the left. So 
to pop out of play. It's a big uh, drink of water right here. It's number 23, Sanderson, the designated hitter. Looks like he's about 6'4". It's nice to get some baseball in the today, huh, Rick? Even though it's, you said you got to work? Uh, yeah, well, I worked this morning, and uh, I've probably got to do a little bit of work afterwards. I got to go up top and try to... Ooh, hit by there. I'm guessing this is a team from the country. I don't know why you'd say that. <laughs> you can always now tell. You have a good night last night, Rick? I did. I had a great night. I'm trying to get the. Uh... Rewatch the Auburn Austin P game from yesterday. I played early yesterday, so I missed it live. Well, it doesn't look like we got anybody on Game Changer today so far. So hopefully that'll come up here in a few minutes. Once it comes up, we'll get the batter, the uh, information up there for you. But for now, we'll just go old school. Tell you what, George, I left my house and it was beautiful and sunny out. And then I get here and this dark cloud's just lingering over ah, the top of you. To, it's supposed to do this part of the day. Wind is blowing in from right field today. So it's going to be a tough, tough poke to get to the Harper home run porch, which I got to get that. got to go up in between innings, fix that camera. It's not picking up, and then that way we can see the beautiful sign that Mr. Strawn and uh, Jared Phillips put up yesterday for us. In the rain, by the way. It was pouring. Man, you make it sound like it was such an extra challenge because of the rain. I, I, mean, mean, I did, did not you, see did you, you do, out here did trying you do, to do anything. Did you do it with no shirt on? That did you do it with no shirt, no shoes, too? Have to walk through the mud back there? Yeah, you, that would excite you. Had to drill the holes with a corkscrew? I did. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Ball outside. What do you think you get a, if, uh, let's see, what do you got? Three and them? You get a done visit mount, done mound visit after this? I just visited. Oh, did he? I didn't see. I was trying to get the thing. Yeah. That was the first pitch after the visit. Wasn't, I didn't see. We're still trying to get the computer set up a little bit. For everyone at home, George is calling the game from home in bed. No, I'm not. I'm actually trying to figure out. I got water dripping on my legs down here <laughs> from under the table. Probably not a good idea. You need to put the table up. Glad to see Richard Moon at the ballpark today. I heard he watched the other night from home, but uh, glad to see him out here live and in person. I see him solo, so that hopefully means Michelle's watching us on TV. <laughs> so, Michelle, if you're out there, thanks for joining us uh, remotely. Bases loaded here for McQueenie here in the first. One out, four, or three on. So, Good comeback there. What do you think about that, Ricky? I liked it. I liked it. I mean, he roll a double play right here, get out of this, and move on. And uh, these are the type of teams right here that you can lose to if you uh, let them believe. You got to take their hope away real early. Foul up. It's going to be out probably of out of play. Coleman gives chase, but not going to have enough. Probably. probably. It's going to land on the football field. Hey, man, try to give them some hope, man. Try to hold the intensity and the drama at home, man. Otherwise, people don't watch, man. You got to keep it's kind of like the teaser for the next week, right? Yeah. All eight people watching at home right now got excited. And, you know, it's just out of the camera view, okay? So, you know, you got to listen can, to us. So, what you're saying is, is you're like Fox News, you're going to lie to the people. Oh, stop. There's no <laughs> political talk here. No political talk here. There's a strike. Oh. Don't know where that missed. Uh, maybe a little outside. Coleman looked like he leaned maybe a tad. One ball, two strikes. Bases loaded. Ground okay. ball should be hopefully a double play. I'm just going to get Oh, did he get him? No. Just got one. Just Score got to run. One. Two away, two to nothing. Two. Northridge. I took that way that last hop came. It came a little slower, I think, and it uh, prevented the double play. But we got two outs now. 
Northridge does score a run. Runners at the corners, Ricky. You remember that lesson from the other day? No, uh -uh. what do you call that? Dunn's going to walk out, and Coach Dunn's going to walk out and see what they're saying or what they say about it because it looked like I think he felt like maybe the call was made because they said he was off the bag, which was definitely not the case. Regardless, he's going to walk back without a change on the call. Game changer is back up now, folks. Northridge is another high school from Tuscaloosa area. Yeah, I know that. We've already talked about it. You weren't here. I was not here. That's right. You showed up late. I do not know anything about Northridge. Never heard of it. Oh, there are the Jaguars also. Yeah, you, you've missed a lot, Ricky. Uh, yes, I have. Well, I asked you questions earlier, and you didn't answer any of them, so. That was uh, boneheaded right there. That was really, really bad uh, play by Spain Park. You will lose to teams like this if you play this sloppy. I didn't see it. I definitely got them chattering over there, though. Said they do uh, operate in the 6A, which is surprising. They only have 1,000 students. Probably at the bottom half of 6A. Yes. Jack Trail, three to nothing here in the first inning. A couple of uh, tough plays in the infield. Some, I haven't seen them yet. Hit the, nobody here has hit the ball real hard yet, but they found the right place at the right time. And then a couple of uh, good base running moves. There's been, I don't think we've had anything but just uh, some ground balls. Nope, so Coach Don, uh, a little fired up over there, rightfully so. He's going to get uh, rally the team there and get them going. Yeah, they, they, uh, they better turn this around. Well, a little shout out to Coach Smith and his family. Hope they're feeling better. I know one of the kids, uh, Miller, was sick earlier in the week, and you know, once the flu and stuff gets going around, I'm, I'm not sure that's what he's got, but I uh, hope he gets better soon. I mean, he, he's missed out here, so I'm sure his family's ready to get him out of the house too. I'm sure yours is. Oh, they always are. <laughs> so, Wendy's at home having a martini right now with her feet kicked up. Oh yeah, her and Jordan already made plans. They're going shopping and everything, and. Uh, uh, we are doing the freshman game today. We tried to get it set up to do uh, live look-ins today, but uh, with the weather and stuff, I didn't want to set up the extra camera in a different place just in case. So maybe we can add that down the road, but we will be doing the, J or the freshman game at 5 p.m. today. So we've got a doubleheader here, Varsity Jaguars, 11 and 1.30, and then uh, stick around at 5 p.m. for the freshman, the future of the program. Oof. I tell you too, and I'm just—I'm not saying this because there are Jaguars, okay? But I did one game of them, and I tell you, I've done some other freshman games in the past, and I'm not talking about, but it, it, it's, it sometimes it's brutal baseball to watch. But this this freshman team's got some talent. They're very well coached. Coach Whitehead and Coach uh, uh, Beverly are doing a great job with them, and uh, that was actually a fun game to call. And uh, your uh, deck in the rain uh, partner out there will be calling it with me, Jared Phillips. Yes, I already talked to Jared today. He's uh, He may call the second game with you today. Yeah, he is. Oh, the second, second game. Okay. So your starting lineup today for the Jaguars, shortstop Aiden Burke, second baseman Reese Jones, first baseman James Battersby. Uh, you got uh, Coleman Gray batting fourth behind the plate, Matthew Weeder in center field fifth. Tyler Walker is, I believe, the designated hitter today. 
Uh, then you got uh, uh, Richard Moon at third base. Sam Waldrop is in the eight hole. And then followed by Arnold Bush, who had a nice game the other day, especially made a nice catch out in left field and uh, played well, had a great bunt. Uh, unfortunately, was called out, but it looked like he was safe. But uh, uh, been playing well, filling in uh, nicely for the uh, injured Chapman Blevins. So uh, yeah, Tyler Walker is the designated hitter, and Sam Waldrop, who's been playing very nicely out in right field, uh, will be the right fielder for the Jaguars today. Aiden Burke steps up to the plate. I believe we have a pitcher here that we can uh, get these bats rolling on. Oh, he come gets on, out Aiden. in front of a swing. First pitch and just reach. He reached for it. It was an outside fastball, and he tried to pull it and popped it up. Yeah, not what you want to see. No, be patient. This kid's throwing strikes. He throws about 75 miles an hour right down the pipe. This is uh, this is the type of pitching that uh, these guys can really get the bats rolling on if they sit back and wait on the ball. You and I both know, Ricky, though, that we typically do not, for whatever reason, slower pitching does not typically favor the Jaguars. Yo, I feel like this is just above the real slow. Uh, this is kind of that. See that? That's nice. That is batting practice. Uh, Ricky, you yes. messed up my keyboard, man. I have not touched your keyboard. I think you did. I did not. You know what it is? This is the thing. They, you know, they don't put this in the instructions when you download these free programs, but um, um, if you have cap locks on, it doesn't work. So one ball, one strike. Jaguars trail three to nothing here. Jeez, this, this program's not working right today, but I got it fixed. There we go. Bottom of the first, Jaguars trail three to nothing here. Uh, Brees Jones at the plate, gets it. It's going to get out of play down the right field line. Sacrificed a little bit of right field camera today, Ricky. Sacrificed it? Yeah, it's just a little, little, it didn't take all the line because I got the bullpen camera out there. I got to go plug it in, though. It didn't get plugged in, apparently. One ball, two strikes here. Reese Jones. Hard Here's hit ground ball, third base. He goes down to his knees. In the dirt, and nice pick by the first baseman. Good play. Was a good play. All right, two out rally time. Welcome back to the Jags. First baseman, number 18, James Addersby. Coleman. Reese Jones's mom, our unofficial team photographer, getting some nice shots out here in the cloudy day. <laughs> Ball outside. First off speed pitch we've seen from uh, the Northridge pitcher. Oh, back out of play. I think the boy's probably a little anxious to play today, excited, you know, disappointed that uh, two nights in a row got canceled for different circumstances, but uh, glad to be back out on the field. A little low. Even to count up at two and two. Wind's died down. Looks like it's even kind of drifting out to left field now a little bit. I like to see that he's been very consistent on that low strike, and uh, he's not, you know, some umpires, when they're calling the low strike, they'll call it too low, you know? Yes. But he's not calling it too low there. He's. I a, hate the shoelace strike. Yeah, and I think the batter does too. Unless he's Vlad Guerrero, senior. Ooh, not a good swing on a three, one pitch. Full up now, two outs. If there were runners on, they'd be going, Ricky, but they're not. Yeah, we should put some on. So they can run. Coach uh, Dunn uh, filling in for Coach Smith today. Is uh, elected to coach first base, put Coach Spencer on third. So I think he likes, I think Coach Dunn likes being closer and uh, keeping the dugout in line. Park, the catcher, number 23. Good at bat there by James Battersby, get on base. You got Coleman Gray, followed by Matthew Weedra coming up. Is Coach Smith here? No, I told you he's sick. Oh, I did not realize that. I thought you said somebody in his family was. I didn't realize he was. Oh, get out of play. Get out of play. Get ass out of play. It's out of play. It's right behind us. Foul ball back out of play. Coleman switch bats. It looks like he's moved to the Atlas. 
called strike there. Nice pitch. D high outside corner. Two balls or two strikes, no balls. Two outs. James Battersby is your runner on first. Ooh, ball. Ball up. Let her high, baby. Now you got a big gap down that left field line. Right, pitcher steps off. He's ready to go, it looks like now. There's a hard hit ball down the right field line. Is that going to be called? It is called right back at the warning yeah, track. Just, just out of play there. I got to go. Let's see. I can move that camera a little bit more to get that. All right, Rick, I'm going to go do a camera adjustment here. Just a slight one. Three outs there. All right. <laughs> Patrick McQueen back out on the mound for the Jaguars here at the top of the second. It's going to be a fly ball to right field. Sam Waldrop settles under it, catches it. First out, one pitch out, soft outs, which what we like here as Jag fans. Cade Sen, the third baseman, up for the Northridge Jaguars. He is the number nine hole hitter. So after this, we'll turn it back to the top of the lineup. Ball low and outside. That's something throughout the year I think McQueen will get better at. He sometimes, though, just jerks that ball over and throws it across his body. There it is. Sorry. It's a good job, though, man. Every time he does it, he seems to understand what he did and come back and correct it and uh, bring it right back in over the corner. I'm impressed with impressed with his composure on the mound this year. You know, we talked earlier about, you know, he had that little struggle in the golf scores, which really wasn't on him. None of those runs were earned, Woo. you know, and uh, got pulled in the first inning, only making it through two-thirds. But, uh, you know, came back his next outing and pitched really well, didn't carry it with him. You know, yep. and again, it wasn't on him. When you when you give up, uh, when you get pulled after two thirds of an inning and uh, six nothing, and you've given up no one runs, it's not on you. Usually, no. And he's, uh, you know, like I said this is uh, early in his varsity career right here, and he's got a lot going through his mind and trying to. He, he's probably thinking a whole lot about each pitch he throws, and as the year goes on, that all that'll come easier to him. He's got a he's got a bright future, I think. Ground ball, James Battersby fields it cleanly. They called it foul. Oh, did they really? He, he fielded it in fair territory behind the bag. I don't understand that call at all, but. Well, 
the coaches on the other side of the opposing team that night didn't understand when the ball hits the bag that it's a fair ball. Oh, that's right. Three balls, two strikes here. Full count, one out. And there's ball four. Mm. Freebies, freebies, freebies. They kill you every time. The leadoff hitter, number five, Mason Keelan. Talking to uh, David Sharp from Prep Baseball Report. I love his little term, extra uh, walks and errors are extra runs. Yes, they are. They equal extra runs every time. Run around first. Fouls it away. I tell you, it is nice, though, and I think it you know, didn't obviously work out as planned, but I think it was the right call, and I uh, know it was the right call, and I think he just one pitch which could have back, but working matchups, and we're seeing some more left-handed batters come through Opposing lineups to sort of have a couple of uh, quality left-handed pitchers I think is nice to have in the rotation this year. For those of you at home, if Ricky doesn't say anything, that means he's in total agreement with me. No, that means I was daydreaming about snowboarding. <laughs> Rick's still fuming that he didn't get invited to the State of the Union address the other night. He was waiting by the mail all week. Is that how, is that how you get invited to that, George? Is you, they send you a letter in the mail? I think so. There's a ticket raffle online. Oh, we. That second one, second one, Coleman's had a tough trouble holding on to today. But uh, like his pop, he's just got to get the ball into the other hand. Yeah, Coleman's got great pop. His, his throws have been super accurate. Can't miss that transfer. His two best friends are Snap and Crackle. Did you think of that all by yourself? I did, actually. <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got a box of 50 silly dad jokes. There's an out to Weidra. And the runner's going to hold at second base. Good throw there by Matthew. Uh, McQueen's got to be over there backing up a little bit more. Yeah, that, that's a, you know, one thing I noticed the last few years is young pitchers. Um, will kind of hesitate a little bit. They're a little nervous to be sprinting all over the field. He's got to have his back against that dugout over there. Yeah, because yeah, if that gets past Richard where he was standing, it does him no good. It does him zero. He, he's just one more uh, person to watch the ball go into the dugout. But, again, those are the little things you learn as you go. You get more experience and more reps. It's all about reps at this point. A good pitch. You know, it's something Coach Smith and I talk about in his weekly coaches show, which has been doing great this year, over a 1,000 views on several of them. Um, but he's got, uh, uh, you know, we talk about really working towards, he's been talking really work, how they're working towards area and really trying to get as many of these kids as many reps so we have options. And then Runners go going. Foul ball. ball off his foot. All right, so they're, they've decided that uh, his slow delivery is going to give them the opportunity to just run all day. He's got to, uh, that's something, right now I know he's just trying to throw strikes, but. 2 you've got to speed that up a little bit. Well, that, and I mean, Coleman's had the trouble getting getting it out twice. Yeah, but they're stealing on the pitcher. Like, and they, we saw this last week when he threw. That's just something he's going to have to work on and get better at. There's a good pitch. Ooh. I don't Ball know outside. I, yeah, I don't know how. It must have been a little too far. I would have thought he would have gotten a chase there. They never chase that two-foot outside pitch. We learned that last year, George. Two balls? Or right, one ball, two strikes, two outs? Runner, Runner go. goes in the dirt. Man, he has got to address the runners. We cannot just give that. He walked this guy and then let him steal second and third. Encouragement from Reese Jones. We got two away. We've hit a couple of lazy fly balls and a bunch of ground balls. We can take either one of them right now. That's a good change up. Uh, that's the ball I would have expected to chase out of. Probably started it a little bit too far outside. Yeah. It's another one that kind of just pops out of Coleman's glove. I wonder what he's got going on with it. Everything else looks good back there today, but he's had some balls just kind of roll out. I don't know. Same hit he's always used, and it's not. Maybe you got to restrong. There's a nice pitch and fouled away. Count stays at three and two.
Ooh, All got right. him chasing the high fastball like that. That was Pitch, ball four. Pitcher's best friend right there, swinging his strike yeah. out of the zone. So, Jags move. We're in the middle of the second inning here. Jags still trail three to nothing. Got a little dicey there with some base runners, but uh, Patrick McQueeny works his way out of it. Thought that first base coach was uh, our own Doug Cole. Yeah, Doug's up in the box. Yeah, I see him now. I had to look up there to verify. You know, I tell you, I love the guys in the box. You know, we got a great little friend group going. You know, and it's fun. You know, because you got a supervisor supervising a supervisor up there. Then you got the guys that are actually working, right? Who's that? Who I've never seen any of them work. Yeah, well, you got Jay Jay, Brad, uh, Jay Bradford up there doing the music and all the uh, walk-up we, we, songs. We do have Jay back off of the uh, DL, so that's nice. Yeah, then you got John Bistrich, right? You got to you got to hold the hold the end of the name like he does, like Arnold Bush, right? Sure, yeah, I'll, we'll we'll let you think that works. All right, man, you're you're ornery today, man. <laughs> I guess you had technical difficulties at home last night, like uh, like uh, where, like uh, Doug has. Couldn't get his uh, iPad to work down at the beach. Oh, I did not have that problem. I do not have an iPad. Well, I do, but not the one that I use. All right, here we're going to move into the, in the bottom of the second inning. Center fielder number three, Matthew Weidra. Matthew Weidra steps up to the plate for the Jaguars. Ooh, that's usually the pitch Weidra parks out there in the pine trees. Yeah, it's about time to get Weidra rolling this year. And this is the type of pitching that he needs to do it with. There it was. Oh, I was that was low. low. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to swing at that. No, he does not. Talk about you. I think you're trying to be a little overly aggressive for the batters, man. I am. I just want to see some hits. You just want to run out of the dugout and hit it yourself. It's frustrating as a bystander. Oh, that was a low strike. I don't agree with that one. You called it below the knees all day, Matty. Where'd that fan come from? I don't know. Thank God, not that low. Oh, we got two and two. We draw, should get a fastball here. Wind's blowing out to left field. There's a hard hit ball to first base. And great play by the first baseman and the pitcher to make the exchange there and get Matthew Weidra out at first, one away. Not Tyler Walker Pitch now. Number 12, Tyler Walker. Tyler Walker's been scrappy this year. Hard, hard to get off the bases. I mean, hard to get, you know, hard to get a, out of the box. Ball misses up in his eyes. Left it alone. You know, you got to figure, you know, well, you're down 3 nothing here, but, I mean, it, we're early enough. Ooh, got to plug in, folks. A little bit early on that one as it goes behind the third base coach. Yeah, and I tell you, uh, you know, but this is still really an oh, oh ball game. I mean, if you if you got to look at it that way almost, you know, that's early enough on it. You know, we haven't even been through the lineup one time, so there's nothing to be, you know, it's all about body language and effort and attitude right here. Yeah, and this is a good at bat right here. So uh, two and one now to Tyler Walker and uh, got a good swing on the one good pitch he's got. A little bit excited and jumped out in front of it. There's a good hit to the, well, never mind. Uh, came off the end of the bat, but he's safe. Oh. Thought that he beat that one out. That's not good at all. Number one,
There's that below the knee strike call. There you go. I know why you've been sitting over here with saggy diapers, Ricky. You didn't have a game changer in front of you. There you go. I just didn't have anybody change my diaper. Foul ball. And there, Richard Moon swung at the uh, low ball that keeps getting called a strike. Two outs here. Fouls that one away. Tell you, for a little while, Ricky, it felt like it was going to be a really nice day out here. Sun was out. It was hot. And then I showed up. Ball misses out. Two and two now. Two away. You are Johnny Raincloud. I, I left my house. It was sunny and beautiful. It felt gorgeous. Felt, it was a nice day. And then got here, George. I could see it from Caldwell Mill Road as I turned in. I said, dang, that cloud's sitting right over George. Yeah. I'm here for your entertainment only. Looks like we, got a, we have a softball tournament or just a, a game? Tournament. No, it's a big tournament, in right. fact. So, yeah, it's a, I can't remember, 80 teams or something like that. They played out the Hoover Met, and uh, it's here. And I think they had to get they had so many teams. They got Hoover. They're playing over Hoover some. Well, it looks like there's about eight. Oh, they're playing uh, not only Hoover, but at uh, what's that other park over there? Uh, Shades Mountain, Shades Valley, Shades. Something. Yeah, Shades, whatever it is. Shades Mountain. Shades Mountain. So they're playing some games. Yeah, there. there was about 80 cars over by the softball and soccer complex when I came in this morning. Goes down looking. Full count. It's been a strike all day, Ricky. Coach Matt Thompson out there delivering the water nicely to the umpire. Two balls and a strike here is we are in the top of the third. I'm not even going to try to say this batter's name. I would not even come close to getting it right, but that's not on him. That's on me. Two balls, one strike. Patrick McQueen on 45 pitches here through two innings. Ooh, nice pitch. Nice pitch, Patrick. Batter calls time and gets it. Fly ball looks like it's going to get out of play. He's tracking. Nope. Nope. He catches it. Huh? So 
I'm going to get that camera fixed up there, too. Up the bat, the DH, number 23, Jack Sanderson. One out, nice track down there by Sam Walter. Sam settling in, Ricky, too, is a nice, kind of almost a roll of a nice defensive, you know? Got to get, get his back going, but I like his defense. Not that Tyler Walker hasn't either. I think they both are 1A, 1B out there. You know, pick, take your pick. Um, I think Tyler's having a little bit better run at the plate, and he's played some nice defense. I'm not sure Tyler's had the opportunity to make the, some of the challenging plays, that, uh, especially the deep fly balls that uh, Sam Waldrop caught against IMG out at the Hoover Met. But uh, uh, he's got a lot of confidence out there with uh, Waldrop's range and his vision on the ball. One ball, one strike here to Sanderson. Sanderson walked in his last at bat for Northridge. A lot of lefties come through this lineup today too, Ricky. <laughs> Not sure where that one missed. Hey, great pitch. I think where it missed was in the umpire's eyes. You know where it missed when Coleman had to ask him where it missed. I know. I told you, missed in the umpire's eyes. Foul tip. Nobody can hear you when you get your muted. Give a shout out to Miller Smith too. Hope he's feeling better. I'm not sure he's coming out here today, but I know the boys have been missing their bat boy the last couple games. He's really, I know the he's Miller's had fun with it. From tried to get him on air just to talk about the experience of being a bat boy. He's not there yet, but I think I'll get him by the end of the season. But I know the boys, of Sean and some of the kids that come over the house, really enjoy having him in there as a bat boy, and uh, I've enjoyed having a. A younger, you know, kind of responsible, mature kid, you know, that's having fun with baseball with them. I'm not sure if they're listening or not, but if they are, Miller, we're missing you. George, you know what I want right here? Yeah. Curveball. In the change zone? up, change up, curveball. In the zone. It's got to be in the zone. There, there it was. Oh. He got to throw it down now. Got away from Coleman, but good play at first. And get the out, strike out. Through the change up. Some, I knew off something was off speed. Uh, there was gonna was gonna take something off speed to get him. He was uh, seemed pretty dialed in on those fastballs. Mm. Just missing them. He was he was on the verge of teeing one up. You know the Smith. Not then while we're talking, just because we keep talking about Coach Smith gone. The Smith I'm excited to see is the basketball player, the daughter. You know basketball, baseball's heart. You know is my number one. But I love girls basketball and invest a lot of time in there. And I think they've got a good group coming up and. I think with what Coach Hatter's doing, we're going to see some good basketball with, you know, for the next couple of years with the girls, and they're going to have some chances to make some runs. And I hear she's pretty good, and that team's pretty good. Got two away. There's a good pitch called strike. You know, I don't think the only thing you can say about McQueenie right now that probably you'd like to see different after take the first inning out of it, but uh, really I don't think he pitched poorly for a couple of the walks. He's working too deep into some counts, which means you're getting a lot of pitches, you know? I do know, and there's a pop-up to second base. Reese Jones under it, calls it, and that'll be the third out of the game. Good inning there for uh, McQueenie. Good job. Looks like he settled down, and then really it all, it's not about what he throws, it's just where he puts it, you know? Just get the ball in the zone, pound the zone. Uh, this doesn't seem to be right now at this point. doesn't look like a very good hitting team. Um, they're making contact, and that's about it. So a team like that, you just get the ball in the zone. Pump it, pump it, pump it. Now we got to get the bats turned around, George. We do, uh, you know. These days are always baffling when you got a guy who has nothing that really on the mound that looks uh, challenging at all. And it's like our, our eyes get too big at the plate, and we overswing. And our timing seems to be off, and nobody's just moving up in the box, taking their time, letting the ball get deep in their stance, and putting the barrel on it. It's just well, I think it comes back to what the coaches always say over here: the freebies kill you, you know. And he hasn't walked anybody. He hasn't walked, he walked, anybody. walked one batter. He did walk one batter. Right. And he's got one walk, and I mean, he's throwing strikes. He's throwing consistent strikes. Not about how hard you throw. Um, you know, you got to have a couple pitches. Not that you know, he does his breaking ball moves a little bit, but. 
Um, so he's got a couple different pitches, but he's throwing strikes, and that's what it comes down to. And you go back and you look, it's the walks and and uh, the, the and any errors. You know, now they had two weak hits in that first inning, but that's it. So it's uh, very uncharacteristic to just still working your way through the line. I mean, we've only had one runner on uh, so far today, and uh, you're going to have Sam Waldrop followed by Arnold Bush, and then we'll turn it back to the top of the lineup with Aiden Burke here in the bottom of the third. It's time right now for Sam to turn it on. Like I said, I've watched Sam for a long time play baseball, and uh, I know Sam can, uh, if there's anybody was it, was out it here. Sam, that, was it Sam the other night that had that phenomenal bunt? I know Arnold Bush had one yes. too, but Sam had that bunt that was just yes, right down the line for it ended up being for a hit. I mean, it was perfect. Ball down and away. Sam had a look, though. He's called that uh, ball a strike a few times today. Yeah, I think, though, too. I think, you know, that's where we want to see. We need to see a few more pitches here to get a little deeper into his count. Another one in the dirt or in the walnuts, as George likes to say. Hey, that could mean two things, especially for the catcher back there. <laughs> <laughs> This is a family program, George. Sorry. Ball misses up 3-0. and oh. We got a Waldrop photographer out here, too, man. That's one thing Spain Park does has no shortage of. You need some photos. I mean, you call a Waldrop or a Jones. <laughs> hey, look. <laughs> I like man, that by rather, Sam. I'd rather do that than do some of these guys because I'll tell you, I mean, that is one thing we've seen some of the umpires. You throw that bat early and start running, you pretty much they tighten the zone on your pitcher. I know. When you're dealing with high school umpires, you got to do that because, honestly, they would just call it a strike just to call it a strike just because he's tired of saying ball. So, uh, uh, you know, last week it was funny when after that bunt, how many texts and calls we got of people sitting there going, hey, uh, he was safe, he was safe. Can show him the instant replay. I'll take a bunt and run right here. Late swing, late swing. Whoa. I think the, he caught the catcher's mitt on that. I think that should have been a catcher's interference, Ricky. Well, I may have, but he's going to have to tell the umpire the Because I think that's why his swing was so late. You you, you can't do that, though. And Look where the catcher's, the catcher's. Oh, we got away. Oh. That was it. That was a tough read with a lefty. I'm oh, not sure, Sam. Huh? No, it was tough because it was right behind uh, Bush's. Yeah, left I'm left. not sure he could see how far it got away. So, I mean, that's a tough read for a lefty. You know, if he's... All right, right here, I would love to put Sam in motion and bunt. Drag it down first baseline. Oh, there it is. He did it. The swinging bunt. Unfortunately, it was a little too close to the pitcher. He did a good job there coming off the mound and getting that. Oh. All right, back to the top of the lineup. Now that everybody's been through, hopefully they've calmed down. And Because uh, Aiden's first at bat, he jumped on the first pitch, reached for a ball, got out in front of it, popped it up. Talking about they haven't hit anything on the butt, neither have we. No. Like it. Left it up, left it up. 1-0. Oh. Talked to Aiden last night, too. You know, you know, you almost feel like maybe he carried a little bit over, you know, 0 for 4 the other night and uh, didn't have his best night at the plate and then gets up his first at bats, first reaches for a first pitch, almost like maybe he's trying to do a little too much, you know, carrying a little bit of that 0 for 4 with him here, you yeah. know. Ball down and away, 2-0. and oh. He's a clearly more disciplined, looks a little more focused here in this at bat. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the thing. We talked about liking an aggressive first uh, leadoff hitter, but, you know, the, you've, you've got to pick when you're aggressive, and you can't just come up and swing at a ball that's out over the outside corner and be too excited, too aggressive, try to pull it and pop it up. That's uh, You just can't have that out of your leadoff guy. You know, I really like the mentality of a lot of these players uh, this year. You know, they don't seem to carry a lot with them from any. Are you run that out? It's off his foot. It's off his foot. It's off the foot, Blue. Come on, wake up. I don't know how you can't call that, but he's got to. I mean, that's a damned if you do, damned if you don't, because if you start running there, then they, you may not get to, you know. 
Well, yeah, I mean, it was clearly off of his foot. The whole ballpark saw it except for the umpire. You got to be kidding me. All right, the field umpire overturned the call. Oh, he did? I thought he called him out. No, 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 no. The field umpire I thought when he put his fist up, he called him out. I was about to lose my shit. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> so that's the first one. That's the first, that's the first uh, foul word we've had in, I think, in two years. Now, now the coach is going to come out to tell the field umpire what the whole crowd, including himself, saw was not what he saw. They aren't going to turn it, and uh, um, I will tell you that we're already getting text messages too clearly off his foot. I mean, we got an instant replay. We got our own little what, what, what we call it, uh, Mark Testator. Or what, it's not Joe Testator. Joe Testator is the broadcast. Who's the guy that they always go to on uh, that the college football guys always go to in the booth? Statutor. Statutor, yeah. Get the rules. So. Huh? Oh, there's a pop-up play. Away. Hanging in there, two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Come, I'll come find you later. Oh, no. There's a ball hit. That may be an out at center field. He's back, and it gets over his head. That's going to be an E7, or E8, I'm sorry. You rule that an error? I do, but it hit his glove. It hit the bottom of his glove. Yes, I mean, if it's with it being straight at him. It's a hard hit ball, don't get me wrong, yes. but it was straight at him. He got back in time and stuck his glove up, and it hit his wrist, it looked like. Well, the other thing is... Um, he was running with his glove up back. I mean, if he probably puts it down and runs like you're taught to do, you're supposed to do, it doesn't slow him down as much. But, hey, regardless of how they score, Jags are in business. One out here, runners on, second and third here for Reese, or as they like to call him in Gulf Shores, Rice Jones. That's how a nickname sticks, right, Ricky? That is how it sticks. Ball hit him in the elbow. Hey, but he turned into it. He did not. I it's not turning into the ball. I know, I know, I know. Now we're going to get a mound visit after uh, it's pitching through strikes the first cup, uh, first inning, two innings, and uh, then he's kind of lost his uh, lost the zone a little bit. James Battery be one, I think, the lone base runner for the Jaguars in uh, prior to this inning uh, with the walk, but uh, in his first at bat, James started to settle in nice over in the first base, don't you think, Ricky? Oh, I do. I think James has done a great job. Here's the thing. You could put James behind the plate, and he would figure it out pretty quick. He's a hey. good athlete, good ball player. So. Yeah, I keep thinking, call me. Call me. you got to take that piece of tape off your helmet, man. I always think you're injured. That, that piece of tape over there. You always look. Every time you come walking up, I think you're, you're hurt. Oh, no. I think you're <laughs> Yeah, okay. All right. George, I got an update here. The Spain Park Varsity soccer team is in Jekyll Island, Georgia, playing a tournament this weekend, and they just won the tournament. The girls? The girls did. They beat, say, they beat St. Pius 3 to nothing. We had three shutouts. Coach Robert Starr's done a great job with that program. Oop. Pop sure. fly. It's going to be foul. It's, it's it a tough have... catch. That's a tough one, and he made the catch. Good play. <laughs> Ooh, last year. Ooh, nice throw. Good throw there to keep uh, – Sam tell you, Waldrop at third base. And, I, you know, that's one of the things I talked to Will about on the show this week, which will be back up, folks. I had it up on Wednesday and then took it down for some um, some just obvious reasons, and it'll be back up loaded today. And it already had 600 views on it just in the first night. Um, but I blocked it after some like, whatever happened the other night, and so I didn't know what was going on, so I didn't know if that was appropriate to have it out there. But anyways, when we talked about it this week, that's one thing I think that, you know, we've noticed, Ricky, is that, that – the bases loaded, first pitch pop up. You know, you can't have that. No. There's an off-speed pitch on the outside corner. 
Yeah, you want him to that, be aggressive. That's a good take right there, though. You that know? Is, oh, that's great. That's take. not a pitch he wants to. Uh, that's not his pitch, and you're having a zero zero count. Let that one go by and look for something a little better. Um, there it no, was. No, but I, you know, you, I'm not sitting there saying you will go up there automatic take. No, I mean you go up there looking for a ball on the inner half, you know, in your zone, ready to tee off on it, and you let anything else go. Uh, then the next pitch he got was a. Uh, hanging curve right down the middle and he fouled it off but uh, took a nice cut at it. Now he's got to protect. Got two yeah. away. I mean, you don't, but did, uh, I'll tell you in a minute. There he goes, left that one down, one and two. Yeah. I really enjoyed Jaguar baseball this year, Ricky. Just uh, not gonna lie to you. I think, always uh, enjoy it. Here's what I enjoy. You no, know, I do too. But I've enjoyed this group. I enjoy, you know. And again, talk to Coach Smith. I know I keep saying it, and I, but that's one of the things I really enjoy are the times that we. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> that six-inch outside uh, fastball didn't get the call, and uh, they were ready to run off the field on that one. Uh, good no. take there by Coleman. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you. Here's what I really like, and this is something I've been kind of irked by a little bit over the years, but. Coleman's doing a great job of it. He's choked up two inches right now yeah. with a two-strike count. Took another. Now he's worked the count full. That's uh, this is this is a good at bat. This is the type Oops. of at bat we need to see more of. Of course, obviously now you know getting those two runs in is uh, got to be the priority, or at least getting one of them in. Three, two, two away. Nobody on first. Great at bat there, Coleman Gray. I don't know why this goes from 0-2 to drawing the walk. That's the type of at bat we needed right there. Get a run in. Coleman gets an RBI. Fielder, number three, and Matty Weidra's up to bat now. This 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 is the type of pitcher right here that can help Matthew get his uh get his hitting going. Get a guy struggling a little bit. Foul ball. Why does it work in a day? That one, I thought he hit the catcher's mitt there, but Matthews doesn't uh, just seem to think he got all ball. That's a hard hit ball. That'll score two runs down the right field line. Right fielder's throwing it in. Here comes Reese Jones. Caught, ball's cut by the first baseman as uh, – Burt goes into third. Now we got runners on the corners, uh, George. You're learning. I like it. Yeah, yeah, man. That, that's a third, first and third's the corners. I'm glad you taught me that. You know, Weedris had that. Uh, and you know what, Ricky, that does? You know what that did right there, right? Scored two runs. T tied the ball game. Tied the ball game. That's right. Three to three now. I tell you, Weedris had some success on that line drive down the left field line this year. Just unfortunately, a couple times it's been right to the first baseman. And here's Tyler Walker, Mr. Scrappy. I like Tyler's uh, Tyler's at bats. He, uh, you know, Tyler wants this. He, he wants to hit the ball. He wants to get on base. Now that he's uh, got enough at bats under him, he should be seeing the ball a little better. They're gonna throw down. They do, and it goes oh. through. Another scores a run as the ball gets away, and Great base Weidra's really. gonna move to third. Good job there by Maddie. It wasn't a bad throw. Uh, the shortstop just took his eye off. It looked like he looked down at the tag. I think he tried went. to tag. He yeah. tried. He knew. He knew to tag. He, he knew to try to get the runner. He was going to have to get the tag down there fast, and he pulled the tag down too quick, and the ball wasn't there in the glove yet. Yeah, it was, so. it was a good jump by Matthew, and uh, the throw was a, a little bit high, but I mean, it wasn't too high to catch or anything. He just uh, he was going to be safe regardless. He was just trying to get that pop tag down. So now, now, now. now there, there's that ball four inches below the zone that uh, it's been called all day though, so we're gonna have to adjust and swing at the dirt. Yep. As a batter, you hate seeing that called. As a pitcher, you love it because you know nobody can really hit it. Ooh, Ooh. off-speed pitch, fooled Tyler on that one. Got two strikes now. Two away, one and two count. All right, choke up Tyler. He's choked up. There we go. I like it. Moved up a step in the box. All right. I like our I like our approach in the box. Left that one in the dirt. All speed pitch. Tried to fool him again. You know those are the little things there. You know, good, great, aggressive base running there by Matthew Weidra. You know, he goes in there, he slides, he immediately finds the ball, gets the third because 
you know, now a pass ball, a wild pitch, you'd get that extra run, which you wouldn't get if you didn't have heads-up base running. Fouled that one off. Off the umpire's shin. I, I thought that might have caught a cup for a second, but it looks like it missed. Hit the walnuts, huh? Hit the walnuts. Sean Jones is up, heading to the snack stand, folks. Oh, no, it was just a, uh, a false alarm. False alarm. He was throwing something in the cart. So we, we have yet to get our snack of the day. Spank, I, I tell you, Ricky, I'm not just saying this, but of all the ballpark, our snack, our concessions are some of the best out there. That was not the best, though. I'll be right back. i got to get something out of the car. Four to three now, Spain Park over Northridge. All right, now we're back here in the top of the fourth inning. McQueenie's still on the mound, throws a strike. Oh, I'm sorry. We changed pitchers. We have Jackson Bradley on the mound now. Nice off speed pitch. Got a big swing and a miss uh, five feet before the ball got to the uh, zone. That was a nice curveball. One and two count here for Jackson Bradley. There's a fastball, ooh, missed outside. Good pitch, good pitch, threw it right to the mid. We were set up a little bit off the plate and did not get the chase. Two and two now for Jackson Bradley on the mound. And another curveball with a big swing and miss. Boy, there's a big speed difference between his uh, curveball and fastball and uh, at least that runner or batter uh, got fooled twice on it. Fouls it away. Steve Holly's in the. Steve Holly's at the show. All right, one away here. There's a fastball get popped up out to uh, left center field. Uh, Weidra calls off the left fielder. Arnold Bush and makes the play. Two away. Very efficient inning so far for uh, Jackson. Number four, 
Not sure what's going on here, Rick. The little scoreboard can't. The scoreboard's not working as well today here. Probably operator error, if you ask me. Yeah, that kind of misses, I, mean, I guess, outside. Figured we'd see Jackson Bradley today. I thought we might see him in a second game. Uh, he might start, but that means my guess is we're going to see Blake Patrick start in a second game. Yeah, I feel like this is a good time for uh, Blake to pitch again. Is he on, when did he pitch last? Uh, that IMG game, but he went a lot of pitches, and I knew they were, yeah. you know, they had talked about trying. I think he would have gone either Thursday's games or Friday, so he's probably slated for today, the second game. Yeah, it'd be good, uh, you know, and I know, I know we're trying to uh, keep pitch counts down a little bit early part of the season until we get to area play, and we might see Jackson get out, I mean, uh, Blake get out and get 60, 65 pitches today. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think he maybe he gets, I don't know how they do it with as many as we got, but senior night on third Tuesday, they typically try to give those guys all an inning, you know, so, you know, you may cut them a little short if you're going to plan ahead for that too. That's true. But again, I think, you know, you're working with Blake. I mean, he's developing into your number one, you know, so regardless if, you know, I think if, with the way he's pitching, if he misses that, you know. Tell you what, though, we hadn't seen CJ uh, in a minute, and I know he had the one good inning, and there's another pop-up out to left field. Arnold Bush is under it. Makes the easy catch, and that'll retire the inning. Good, uh, efficient inning there I'll for be Jackson right back, Bradley. Ricky. I'll be right back. That's all right if you're not. All right, now we're back here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Richard Moon's a batter. Takes ball one. Sam Waldrop's on deck. Ball misses down and away, 2-0. and oh. A little action now heading to the uh, Northridge bullpen. There's a strike on the lower outside corner, two and one. Good take. Swing and a miss on a fastball, two and two now for Richard Moon. There's a ball, ground ball to the third baseman. Makes the throw, keeps his foot on the bag, and there's one away. Up to bat. The right Bring shoulder. Sam Waldrop up to bat now. Sam Waldrop.
Hard hit ball up the middle for Sam. There we go. Uh, give us a base runner. Sam got the barrel on that one, teed off on it. Well, that's two innings in a row now, or uh, two at bats in a row that Sam's got on base. And see if Arnold Bush can move him over. Arnold, what's his name, George? Bush. Squares the bunt, pulls back, takes ball one, one and oh. Squares the bunt, pulls back again, 2-0 and now. Felt like he could have maybe stood in there and took that one off the back. You think? Oh, yeah. It's tough to do, though, sometimes. you got to get a few more bats under your belt, I think, to uh, get comfortable like that. There's ball three in the dirt now. Got a 3-0 and count. Takes a strike down the middle, three and one. There's a hit, that's gonna be a base hit. That's getting down, Sam Waldrop's gonna go to third. He might score on this. He's got a big, he's holding him now. That's a, a good job there to hold him at third base. Great job, Arnold Bush, with the stand-up double. You like that? I do like that. I love that. I bet Arnold Bush loves that. For the Jags, the shortstop, number six, Aiden Burke. Now we're back to the top of the lineup, Aiden Burke. And swings of the first pitch, pops it up to right. That should get the runner in from third. Waldrop tags up. He's going to be in safe. Oh, Bush got hung up a second. Not good base running there. Oh, he's tagged out. That'll end the inning. But not before we get another run in. And the score is now 5-3, to three, Spain Park over the Northridge Jaguars. The leadoff hitter, number five, Mason Elam. Hard to like, take the 
Ground ball back to the pitcher. Should be an easy play for Jackson Bradley. Makes it nice and easy, nice and smooth. Jackson Bradley, our thumbnail, one of our thumbnail player cards for the day. You can get out there, you get it. If you want your baseball card or from the game, you can even send a direct message to us. A lot of the younger kids have actually been asking for those, and we've been sending some of them out with our, the thumbnails that we send out to kind of collect them as uh, some of the younger players collect them as baseball cards this year. Kind of like that, you know, uh, where we put the game together and uh, – you know, we can actually print them out. Maybe we can do that for a game if you're out there listening. We'll print them out on some card stock. Maybe a player pre fan appreciation and get some autographs so they get the boys autograph their cards for some of the younger kids. Just one more thing to put on your plate out there. One ball, one strike here. Ground ball, Richard Moon fields it nicely, looks into the glove, takes his time, makes a good throw to first base, and he gets the out. So, been impressed with Richard Moon at third base so far this year. He's really sitting there nicely, looked it into his glove very nicely there. So, so Jax Bradley, two outs here now in the top of the fifth. Jags lead. I don't understand why this thing keeps doing this. Five to three. Sorry, guys at home. The, the thing keeps messing up the score. I think it's the humidity out here. Two outs here, though. Yeah, you like that, don't you? I do like that. Jackson's been very efficient so far. That's what happens. You pump that zone. Throw strikes early in the count. One ball, no strikes. Tell you what, it goes back to uh, I think every every pitching coach in history will tell you this: if you can get a first pitch fastball, you you are on the path to success as a pitcher. Yeah, I mean, you go look at it. That's one of the you know we, we Coach Dunn gives us some access to look at some of the stats which we don't typically share. And I'm not a big fan. I think just like uh, Crash Davis would say, you know, ERA batting average that's fascist, right? You know, I'm looking at quality at bats, first pitch strike, strike percentage, you know? And I think that if you go look at first pitch strike and what the percentage, of how much the increment, I mean, it's exponential how much it goes up on the out. Well, I mean, in a time right now where we live by the home run and the game of baseball, quality at bats probably determines the success of a team more than anything. A, a oh, team yeah. that has more quality of bats per game than the other teams, you're almost always going to Well, and think team. about it, too. Not only that, it's a, a guy like Tyler Walker who's seeing seven, eight, nine pitches, especially down at Gulf Shores, you know, a lot of these teams, they don't have five, six, seven, eight guys in their rotation, you know? The deeper you get a guy like that, the more pitches you make him throw. And those are things that don't show up in a game-changer stat, right? That's it. I mean, but, you know, like Coach Smith sitting at home watching this right now and – one so we may I, this may be our last game, folks. So <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, one thing I think he would he would Hunter he's probably laughing right now hearing us say this, but there's a nice curveball, slow curve in there for a called strike three. That'll end the inning. Hold that thought. I'll be right back.
First baseman, number 18, James Battersby. Got a new pitcher for uh, Northridge Brumfield. Got a couple of ground balls there. Yes. There's a fly ball popped up out to deep center field. Wynn's got it. Oh, he missed it completely. He lost it. Battersby's going to go for three, and he should have it with no problem there. Nice base running by James Battersby. Uh, ball went deeper. Wind, I think, got under it and took it a little further than, he was, or than anybody was expecting, and the uh, center fielder just lost it in the gray sky, I believe. I thought he was going to camp out under it, and he missed it by five or six feet. Coleman Gray. All right, runner on third base. Coleman takes strike one with an off-speed pitch. So look, Rick, what I did. We got uh, some bonus coverage today, folks. We got live look-ins on the JV game. Oh, exciting. Got live look-ins on the JV game between innings there, so. We'll give you some scoring updates on that one as well as it goes on. Coleman Gray ball, turns on one. Field. That might get out of here with that win. That's a home run. Two run home run for Coleman Gray. Solid contact, got the barrel on it. Don't know if it gets out without that little bit of wind blowing straight out to left, but nevertheless, that is a two run dinger. Good job, Coleman. Took a couple pitches he didn't like early in that at bat. Waited on one he did and uh, got the head of the barrel on it. You know, one thing I love about this team, they never panic. You know, they're down three nothing, wasn't going our way. Wait for their opportunity. We even get two outs with bases loaded. And still, you know what that's called though when you score runs with two outs? Two oh, out, two out rally. rally. Two that's out it. rally. Oh my this. goodness, George. There's a high, high pop up out to deep short. Shortstop, ooh, he should have let uh, an outfielder should have called him off on yeah, that, but he makes the that. catch. That's a good play there. That was kind of what, that's one of those in the tweener camera range. Got two away now Walker. with Tyler Walker coming up the bat. Oh, good time here for Tyler to. Uh, it's games like this, though, when they're seeing pitchers who are throwing strikes, who aren't throwing, don't, don't have great stuff, just putting the ball in there. And that's when these guys like Tyler Walker can get the confidence he needs. Sam Wall, guys that I know can hit the ball really well. They just need that bats, need the confidence. Takes a curveball on the out, uh, off the outside part of the play there for a ball. There's a fastball. He checked his swing on. He's going to have to commit. One and one now to Tyler Walker. Ooh, curveball. Tyler, you've got to jump on that, man. That was a hanger. That's that double. Got a big one gap ball, down strikes. the left field line. I'm sorry about that, George. No, you go ahead. One ball, two strikes. Oh. Watch the same curveball twice. That That's not what uh, Tyler was looking for there. Caught him guessing. I think he was sitting on a fastball there on that last pitch and got surprised. Anyway, not before Coleman Gray hits a two-run dinger and Spain Park Jaguars now up seven to three as we go to the top of the sixth inning.
All right, I believe we got our uh, DH, Jack Sanderson, up to bat now. Jackson Bradley still on the mound for Spain Park. Top of the sixth inning, seven to three. Spain Park, first ball, the fastball down in the walnuts. Swing and a miss. Foul tip in the glove of Coleman Gray, one and one now. Fastball right at the knee, called strike, one and two. Dude, what Jackson Bradley looks, and I, I probably say this for every time I've ever seen him on the field, he looks so calm, so at ease, George. He does, and I think it's a, it's a weak ground ball to first base, makes the pitch, and Jackson fields it. Great job there by Battersby and Bradley to get the out. I think go back to this. The old 5 1 put away. Yep. All right. There we go. I got it fixed. I figured out what was going on. The, the difference, though, in throwing and getting ahead of the batter, not getting down 2 0, 3 0. Here's a pop up out to left field. Arnold Bush is under it. Makes the catch. There's. You know, I know I'm old school. Four, four pitches and two outs. I know I'm old school, Ricky, but, you know, I'm the kind of guy that still loves to see two hands on an outfielder catching the ball. You are old school. You know what I like to see? What do you like to see? I like to see his glove was open, his eye position, and his feet were set just right, and he watched the ball into his glove and made the catch. Really? Yeah, that's what I like to see. I like to see it all fundamentally sound. I might find a fault. I do. There's a pop-up. That's going to get behind the backstop, it looks like. Yes, it's going to land. Oh! One foot for me. Not Dave, quite one foot. David Blevins made an effort at it. Richard Moon wanted no part of it. David, you're going to do better than that, man. You almost let Richard get One strike, no balls, two outs here. Jackson Bradley, Patrick McQueen uh, settling uh, this for a nice little. not McQueen. Huh? Jackson Bradley still on the mound. I said Jackson Bradley because you were muted. I said Jackson Bradley, Patrick McQueen have pitched a nice game to oh, this point. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm the sorry, combo, George. The combo com combined hey, for a 7-3 lead here in the George, sixth. George, you're going to have to calm down or I'm going to get security. All right, whatever, Joe. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Joe. I'm Joe Kelly right now. There's no. a, that's the first hard hit ball of the day, right into the glove of Burke, and he makes the throw, and there's three away. Tell you what, Jackson Bradley has been incredibly efficient. Back-to-back, one, two, -back, one, two three, three innings. All right, folks, we're going to try this. I'm going to give you some, try to give you some bonus coverage. Now, keep in mind, it is a uh, wireless camera, so it might be a little jumpy, but uh, it might pause a little bit on you if it does, but uh, it should, for the most part, be okay. But a little bonus coverage, you can catch part of the JV game, or the freshman game.
All right, we're back here, bottom of the six. Richard Moon at bat. Going to be a 3 2. We're going to come in here with you at the 3 2 count. Jags should not have to. Hopefully, a bat. This should be their last at bat for the game, hopefully. Good hard go. Brown ball. Richard Moon to the left side of the field. Past the third baseman for a ground ball base hit. Tell you what, we're finding some barrels now, George. Now adding for the Jags, right fielder, number four, Sam Waldrop. Sam's been on base a few times today. You'd like to see him uh, keep it going. Wireless camera seems to be working pretty good for the bonus coverage today. A snap throw down the first, throws late. Moon's back safely. 1-0 and count now to Sam Waldrop. Let's get it rolling here, Sam. Put a few more runs on the board. Oh, he pops up the shortstop. And shortstop makes the catch, one away. Up to that for Spade Park, left fielder, number 20. Arnold. What just happened there? Oh, there we go. We're back. There's a nice hit. Arnold Bush has got the bat rolling today. That's going to be another, uh, looks like a double for Arnold Bush. And we're going to move uh, Richard Moon up to third base. Two doubles, back to back doubles for Arnold Bush. Tell you what, he came to play ball today. Well, Bush did. I mean, those are not uh, dinks. He's hitting line drives Up in the gap. The shortstop, number six, Aiden Burke. Tell you what, when the nine hole guys uh, getting you back to back doubles, it's always a good thing. Got one away you know, and, and top you know, of the that, lineup back up now. And you know, no, you know that's one of the things you gotta love to see. Just as a as a spectator, as a fan of sports, a guy like that given his opportunity. You know, he's. Been running. What's going on with my? I tell you what, I'd love to see right now is what you know what we talked about opening weekend or opening week was. I said I think this team could be as successful or more successful than last year's if our seven, eight, and nine guys can bat a hundred points higher. Which isn't an easy task. There's a curveball in a bit high called ball one. Uh, love to see the whole team average go up, but. You know those top guys are going to bat where they, you know, it's going to be pretty consistent. Uh, although I think right now our probably our top five guys are uh, out hitting our top five guys from last season at this point. You can get that seven, eight, nine guy, uh, hole really going. Good block by the catcher, keeps the runner at third base. That was uh, one of those 58-footers. There we go, we're back at it. Lost it for a second there, Ricky. You know what I looked up a minute ago and I thought? I thought Hudson Cahalen was throwing right-handed for Northridge. There we go, we're back. Sorry, folks, had a little technical difficulty there for a second. My antique eyes aren't good enough to actually see his face from this far away, but that hair sure looks like Hudson Cahalen's. It does. You do. Hudson's a little taller, though. Yeah, he's a little taller. So you stick with Jackson Bradley coming into the seventh here, or do you go ahead and get you a uh, get your true closer coming in? It, it, it kind of depends to me. I mean, Jackson's pitching fantastic, but uh, if you've got somebody you need to get an inning for, yeah. which I think we probably do, especially with a four-run lead, yeah. I'd like to see us expand that lead a little bit, and then, yeah, get another guy out here just to get an inning for somebody. You're, see, we're going to need all these guys. There's a Ooh. hard hit ball just fouled on the left field line. By Eden Burke. They're starting to sit on these guys, doesn't adjust it to the speed difference. Yeah, we've hit so many foul over towards the uh, third base coach today, and would really love to see our guys move up in the box a little bit and let the ball travel a little bit further. So, Ricky, there's a rumor you're going to make me go solo the second game. It's a rumor. You know what rumors are? I didn't, nobody said I'm going to make you. No, I'm just kidding. Steve Holly's going to come down here and fill in. I heard Jared Phillips was. Maybe. 
Reese Jared Tank Jones. I told I told Jared I was definitely doing the first game. We'd see about the second game. See whether or not I brought up any political talk. Whew, please don't, George. Ruin this broadcast. I come to the ballpark to avoid that. Yeah. How'd you get a new hat, man? Look at that beauty right there. How are you getting? How are you getting hats, man? Don't worry about me. Hey, Ramona. Did you hear we gave our shout out to Davis the other night? You what? Our shout out to Davis. Oh, did you? On a military appreciation night. I didn't hear you. When Hagen, when Hagen was running. Uh, when Hagen was running, he said, "Want to give a shout out to Hagen's older brother, who's in the Merchant Marines, right? And he's oh, yeah. the Merchant Marine Academy, and he played baseball at Saint Park." And, uh, and I thank had him. just left. And I wanted to thank him for his service. And uh, thank, thank you. you for his I'm going to replay it. Yeah. yeah. So we talked. Just said, you know, and my colleague family's been heavily involved, and uh, want to just again thank Hagen, or his brother for his service in the Merchant Marines. And then don't turn it off after. Don't turn it off after that. It's like about a minute later, I make it one and clear. Reese Jones turns on that one. As for time, get a little encouragement from James Battersby here on the on deck circle. Again, that's one thing, folks at home, that you don't maybe necessarily get the benefit that we do being here live. It's just the way this team. Ooh, wow, good ground ball down the left field. That's going to score two runs. Definitely be a double for him. He may try to go for three here. I don't know. You don't make that. Nope, he gets it in. But great, great at bat by Reese Jones. They fouled off some pitches and just sat on one and a nice line drive down the third base line. First base for him. First baseman, number 18, James Patterson. That makes it nine to three here. Jags have nine hits on the day. Inside there for James Battersby. That's going to be a ball one. Uh, you got uh, Reese Jones on third base. Nine hits for the Jaguars. Nine runs so far in the ball game. Bats started off a little slow, but they've definitely got it going. They've scored starting the third, four runs, one run, two runs, and then two runs here in the sixth to get their nine run total. Ooh, foul back, and he uh, had a little bit of room. Tough catch for the catcher. One ball, two strikes here to James Battersby. Our, or, uh, Reese Jones is your – oh, he's on second. Sorry, not third, folks. I wanted him to get the triple. And mentally, I had a triple. Ball outside, two balls, two strikes. Two outs here, runner on second. Jags lead nine to three here. Ball low, three balls, two strikes. First base is open, but uh, get a little sun coming out here, folks. Ooh, good line drive. Ooh, that's a tough one on the shortstop. They're going to send them. They're going to send them. It's going to be no play at home. Wow. Hard hit ball. One hopper just ate the shortstop up. I'm not sure how they're going to score that. I would probably score to hit as tough as that one was. Um, Coleman Gray coming off a two-run home run last inning. He's going to step up to the plate. Great, great solid at bat there. They do score to single, which is uh, what I agree with there. Um, Anyways, that'll give the Jags, put the Jags up 10 to. Ball gets in the dirt. Bad, late jump, but gets there. Great slide. That's one of those folks that you look at the slide. The slide was, what? Okay. 
sure. Two balls, no strikes, Coleman Gray. Ricky, get off the headset, man. Get off the headset. We were doing good while you were off. Oh, I'm sorry. Now you can stick around. A curveball in for a called strike. See? We had nothing but balls until so you got back on. Did you see that hard shot by James Battersby? I did see that hard shot. And uh, some aggressive, I think, uh, definitely Coach Smith-style base coaching there from Coach Spencer there on third base, sending him being aggressive, getting that run home. Oh, <laughs> wow. Not, not what you would have. That's one of those that uh, he has not called that ball up at the letters all day long. Randomly called it now. Uh, it's wow, 10, ten to three. That's a ten to three. That's a ten to three call. That is. Foul ball. There's a pitch fouled away there. That's a good job by Coleman to foul. That's not a good pitch to hit, but it was probably a called strike if he doesn't swing at it. Okay. Two and two now to Coleman Gray. He got the curveball again. And oh, they, a he, delayed call. So who, if you go. Coleman, that's a 10 to three call, buddy. 10 to three call. Yeah. I've never heard of a 10 to three strike zone. I've never heard of a 10 to three curveball. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a 10 to three uh, strike zone right there. So, Wendy, if you're wondering, I just got you a hat. Somebody just come from the, the, the uh, merch stand saying that you had been eyeing his hat and I, that I had to buy it, so now I've got a hat coming home for you tonight. Let's go back to some bonus coverage over here. Tell you what, though, you look at the stat line, George, and uh, you know what jumps out to me right now is two hits for Northridge, only two hits. Yeah, so uh, right now, if you're wondering, uh, here we got the freshman game up for you here a little bit. Uh, Bertie Smith then pitching for uh, Spain Park over there. He's thrown 24 pitches so far. Jags lead that game 8-1. to one. So the highlights for that game so far are going to be Oh, Brody Smith, maybe he doesn't, maybe dad needs to stay home. Brody Smith, two for two, two runs, one RBI on the day, pitching a nice game, two innings pitched, giving up two hits, one run, one earned, one walk, one strikeout. Um, throw 24 pitches, 14 strikes. Other Jaguars of note, uh, Holmes, the shortstop, one for one on the day. Uh, Morris in first baseman, 0 for 0, but two RBIs and one walk. So uh, he's uh, doing what he tends to always do. And then again, Johnson, the right fielder for our freshman Jaguars. He's 0 for 0, but he scored one and two RBIs and uh, did a walk in there. So um, so freshman Jags all over Thompson right now, 8 to 1. There's your bonus coverage. Sorry we didn't get you in an inning, but uh, we will be playing the – we will be streaming the freshman game. Not calling it, but we'll be streaming it during the uh, – uh, interim intermission between these two games here. I've got a, some defensive changes, George. I don't know if you caught that, but we got Hagen Holly in at left field. Battersby moves over to third base while Jacob Bird comes in at first. And we have, uh, did we make a change? Yeah, we made a change here and uh, have Andrew Thornton in at center field. Sorry about that. Again, I, think I could tell. My old eyes can't really tell. I just see a white blob out there. Jackson Bradley out here to finish it out for the Jaguars. Two balls, no strikes. Ball misses down, 3-0. and oh. All right, Jackson, finish this thing off. Caldwell at bat for the Northridge Jaguars. Three balls, no strikes. Okay, you got Andrew Thornton. Uh, you got Hagen Holly out in left field. Coleman Gray still your catcher. James Batters be at third base. How, how did I uh, wonder why all of the uh, teams that use Jaguars are baby blue and black? I, I think you know. I think some of it. I don't. I can't say 100. percent But when I go out and pull their logos, they got all, a lot of the same, and a lot of them pulled the Jacksonville Jaguars logo. Uh, I wonder why they went with baby blue instead of teal. I like baby blue better, so I'm not complaining. You know, to work uh, hex code nine, BDFF. 
Oh, okay. Thank so you. So just so you know, that's the Jaguar blue. I'll run down to uh, Sherwin-Williams and tell them that. All right, walk the first batter. There's a strike. I tell you, what killed me is that, you know, for when I tried to replicate some stuff and do the, when I was playing with some 3D stuff for basketball, you know, had to do the Spain Park logo, couldn't find the font. Turns out it's just Times New Roman with a, and they just tweaked it a little bit, stretched it. Foul ball out of play. Nice little curveball there from Jackson. I like the pitch. You seem more like a Comic Sans guy myself, you know, to me. No, I'm a gothic bold. Oh. There's a great font out there, or a chunky five. <laughs> Actually, I, that's what I use for a lot of stuff on our, it's, it's called chunky five, so I think that describes it pretty well. Good block by Coleman. Good way to keep it in front of him. Kept the runner on first base. Good job. One and two. This should be it. God bless. I don't know why this keeps changing the score. User error again. There's a Brad ball Wall, hit to James third batters. base. Batters be to second. And Reese to first. And he got him. No, oh, he didn't. He was safe. safe. He, he was safe. safe. I've got a uh, black bar there across the uh, well, that's too high? Well, you should have told me I'll put it down, man. Well, it's the first time that it's been an issue. Nice to see, though. You were kind of talking about James Battersby earlier. You know, he just jumps in wherever you put him and just makes plays. Oh, well, that's what I was saying earlier. It doesn't matter where you put Battersby on this field. He, he can play. He, he's Again, guarantee if you put him behind the plate, he would do a very admirable job back there as well. Nice strike. That's it, man. One thing Jackson Bradley does is he throws strikes. He ain't gonna, he ain't gonna knock you down with his velocity, but he's gonna, he's gonna get you with his control and his. And, uh, again, between Coach Dunn and and Coleman and Bradley, the pitch selection is just usually pretty, pretty on point. Well, he's he's got a solid 10, 12 mile per hour difference between his curveball and his uh, fastball, and. It's uh, at least had these Northridge hitters off balance today. Well, and again, no offense to Coach Latch, but I think uh, their early exit's been our game between Chapman Blevins and Jackson Bradley this year. You know, normally we would just be getting them back this week. Right. You know, with the traditional Final Four runs at Spain Park. Then you need, there goes a the runner. Coleman with a throw, and again, uh, that's one of those. Coleman made a good, had a good pop on that one, made a good throw, but the runner was already standing on the base, just getting great jumps off our pitching today. Yeah, but on that one, that was a curveball. They were setting it up for a strike out there. I think, Cole, and I think Coleman was just a tad bit slower trying to get the strike call because it was a little high there. So I don't. I, we haven't thrown over to first much today, which is a little bit different for us. And uh, but I think Coleman just, I think they were more worried. He was more holding it there for a second. Ooh. Ooh. And skipped off Coleman's uh, glove, and but I saw. I'm not going to put. I'm not. You know, goes down on the. Oh, jeez, what happened there? I just got. I, I'm okay. So that's definitely a miscommunication. I think because uh, Coleman's going out to tell them. I thought something else was coming. The fast because I've never seen Coleman miss one. I just went right beside him. He he got a fastball and he was looking for a curve. So two and two, one away. Runner now at third base for uh, Northridge. You know, if, and I'm sure Coleman's telling them too. Don't even worry about that guy up there. You got a 10 to three lead. I tell you though, the scoreboard doesn't lie, right? And oh, he's really trying to get him with that hook. Scoreboard doesn't lie. You know, when you look at the scoreboard, you see two hits, three runs. I mean, it's just the old, old age, old adage of you know freebies will kill you, and that's really where they got their runs. And once we got rid of giving those away, those freebies and settled down, um, I mean, and so you don't have to look any farther. I mean. There's a hard hit ball. It's going to be a base hit out to right field. Score a run for Northridge. Single. One out here, top of the seventh. Runner on first now. And 10 to 4 is your score. Where's your bullpen camera at? I got it on the JV field. So I guess you're telling me I can't see the bullpen today. No. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. But I did get the camera working, so it's, ooh. There's a fly ball. That should be the second out. Thornton's under it. Runner goes back to first base. There's two away now. One pitch, one out. We'll get it done here.
I'm not even going to do defensive indifference. You don't even care about that. Oh, look at he didn't care. He had zero shot at him. Oh, come on, man. You're so cynical. Co Coleman caught the ball, and he was 10 feet from second base. They're getting every one of their jumps today have been a walking, running jump. They just start walking, and as soon as he comes set, they count to two and take off. We ain't going to miss. All right, o One ball, one strike. Two strikes, no ball. Nunley strike. is your batter. Two away. Runner on second. I think we get the hook here, or we go to fastball two feet outside. He's got two strikes. I thought he called that first one a ball. I'm sorry. He did not. There he goes again. See that running jump? He took off walking. That's going to be a foul ball out of play. Runner will go back to second base. Yeah. But I don't think you're really that worried about the batter right now. I mean, the, 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 you are worried about the batter. You're not worried about the runner. Right. But there's also that part in you that just can't stand just giving bases. That's true. Runner staying still this time. And there's a foul Bounds ball. Away. Swings with the O2 delivery. Hey, batter, batter, batter. Swing. Batter, and he's swinging, he's swinging, he's swinging. Can't really classify Ferris Bueller's Day Off as a baseball movie, but it does have a great baseball scene. It does. You know why uh, Coleman's ball got out of there? Because he didn't hit it too high. He did not hit it too high. Actually, hitting it high <laughs> helped him out a lot. It did. <laughs> Who gives a shit? It's out of here. <laughs> That's right. There it is. Strike, strike three. three. Now we in the out. ball game. So the book on the game there, Jaguars 10 hits off of 10 runs. Northridge, four ball runs ball off ball three ball hits. Ball Northridge ball had one error. Jags were clean in the field. Jaguars. Your game day sports ready player to get radio player of the game. I think we got to go with, with Arnold Bush today. Arnold Bush for sure. Or, you know, or it could be a combo outfield. Uh, Arnold Bush or Sam Waldrop. They both and actually they both ignited this lineup and got it going and uh, made the most of their opportunity. So I'm going to go with an eight nine. Arnold Bush and Sam Waldrop as a game day player, sports radio player players of the game today. All right. You like that call? I do like that call. You got Patrick McQueenie going three innings, giving up two hits, three runs, three all, all three earned, two walks, four strikeouts. And Jackson Bradley comes in and finishes out, goes four innings, gives up one hit, one run, uh, none of no earned runs, uh, two uh, two walks, and uh, three strikeouts. Jacks had a total of seven strikeouts on the day on the mound and four walks. Northridge again, uh, equal number uh, for their pitch. Oh, they had five. When the Jaguars struck out five times and drew three walks. So we are going to come right back and do it again. But we are going to put the JV game or the freshman game on for you on there. We will not be calling it, but we will have it on so you can see it. Nah, I don't do interviews with skilled players during the game because they got to go play again. So we'll get them this. I'll get them this week.
want to take. Oh, no, I'm going to stick around. I knew he was going to get you out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to Spain Park High School in game number two between the North Ridge Jaguars and the Spain Park Jaguars. Starting lineups for game two, starting with North Ridge. Batting first, playing shortstop, number five, Mason Elam. Batting second, playing left field, number 14, Kyle Dunnelly. Batting third and catching, number eight, Milo Obradovich. Batting fourth, the DH, number 23, Jack Sanderson. Batting fifth, the first baseman, number 12, Thomas Wolf. Batting sixth and pitching this afternoon, number seven, Evan Malone. Batting seventh and playing center field, number three, Logan Caldwell. Batting eighth and playing second base, number four, Anthony Messina. And batting ninth, playing third base, number one, Kate Sen. Also in for Northridge and playing right field, number 10, Sawyer Thompson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your starting lineup for the Spain Park Jaguars. Batting first and playing shortstop, number six, Aiden Burke. Batting second and playing second base, number 11, Reese Jones. Batting third, first baseman, number 13, James Battersby. Batting fourth, the DH, number 23, Coleman Gray. Batting fifth, center fielder, number three, Matthew Weidra. Batting sixth and playing third base, number 10, Jackson Bradley. Batting seventh and catching, number eight, Evan Destris. Batting eighth and playing right field, number four, Sam Waldrop. And batting ninth, left fielder, number 20, Arnold Bush. Pitching for Spain Park, number one, Richard Boone.
This is not a fuck, right? Yeah, yeah that one's probably getting his kicked out. Yeah. I've actually been pretty good about it. Over there. That's a five or six and a one. It's trying to be pretty clean. I was actually saying that my dad. All right, folks, we're back at it. Sorry, got a little loud there. There we go. Turned down a little bit. So we're back at it. Game number two here. Sorry we lost the freshman game over there. Battery, the camera on that battery is apparently not very good, but uh, so uh, you can get that fixed for next time. But they got you a little bonus coverage where we could, when we could. Um, so we're getting ready to start game two. Jags will remain the uh, home team here. As uh, we are at Spain Park, there's nothing like last week, the tournament where we were flipping coins or anything like that. This is uh, strictly a doubleheader, Spain Park home team. So. Richard Moon going to be your starting pitcher for the Spain Park Jaguars here. Richard uh, had a great outing down against Mobile Christian, a perennial champion in 5A district. Uh, won five championships since 2015. Had a great outing against him. Him and James Battersby convened for a, I believe it was a two-hit, one-run game, uh, which the Jaguars won and shut down what was a very potent offense. But Richard's going to start off for the Jaguars here. Nice strike right off to start off the game. I love first pitch strike to start the game. I know coaches love first pitch strikes, period, but I love them to start the game. Just think it uh, does a nice job setting the tone. Ooh, I'm not sure what that missed. A couple of changes for you. We'll get them for you defensively on the graphic, but uh, you're going to have uh, James Battersby back at first, Jackson Bradley at third. Evan Bistrich going to catch this game. Sam Waldrop's going to remain in white, and... Uh, there we go. Nice strikeout start. Oh, oh, sorry. One ball, two strikes. Nice high fastball there from Richard Moon. Strike three, gets him looking. Nice pitch, Richard Moon. Nice pitch, Richard Moon. So I have taken a few requests today for the sun to stay out. We have made that request through the proper channels. Hopefully it uh, will be heard in time, and uh, we will get some sun for the rest of the game. But just to let you know, we did do our best to accommodate that request. Folks that are sending comments, keep sending them. We love them. We don't always get to answer them during the game because it's uh, just a little. Uh, but keep sending them. We look at them after the game, and we answer them when we can. So appreciate everybody sending in comments today. One ball, one strike here. 
Batter is Nunnally again. It's Ball is going to be low. I tell you, if you didn't get an opportunity to see that uh, the home run that Coleman Gray hit, it was a nice, solid hit out to left field. Uh, wind is blowing heavily, though, out to left field right now, so it's going to definitely be a factor probably in the game. If anybody gets one up, may carry a lot farther than it normally would today. In this game, that is. Three balls, one strike here, one out in the first inning. Ball four. I'll tell you what, if you're going to miss, I guess you miss low. Oh, there we go. Milo Obletovich. I got the name. And thanks to John Bistritz up there, who I probably, who my guess is, went down and got the school on how to say it. Obliterich. So, uh, <laughs> fouls it away. Runner on first, no balls. One strike to the batter of Blitovich. Ball low and outside. Folks, stick around at five after this game. We will be doing the freshmen. Freshmen are people too. Ball high. Two balls, one strike. Got a few fans out on the home run deck, which is nice to see. Good called strike on the outside corner low. They're very, very, very tough pitch to hit. Nice location there, Richard Moon. Two balls, two strikes, one out, runner on first. Gets out in front of him. The only play is going to be to first base. <coughs> Sorry, runner was going there. Does advance the runner, but very smartly, Richard Moon goes to first base, gets the out. So two outs for the number four hole hitter here for Northridge. Sanderson at bat now for the Jag or for the uh, Northridge Jaguars, number 23, left-handed batter. Fouls it away. A little chatter, a little more chatter coming out of Northridge. Uh, I don't know if maybe their coach talked to them, but they <laughs> seem to have a little bit more pep in their step and a little bit more, uh, a little more vocal this game, chill, you know, making some noise, try to get something going here in the first inning. Low. Not a bad miss, though. One ball, one strike. Wind is really picking up here, folks. I don't know if you can see the flags on the camera there, but they are going solid straight out left. All low. Two balls, one strike. Coach Dunn giving some instruction to his catcher. Ooh, very close. Um, maybe a little low there, but I thought he had that one. Three balls and a strike.
Car ground ball right side of the field. Going to be field by Reese Davis. Oh, rush the throw. But uh, rush the throw. Great play by James Battersby to get the ball first and then they get that foot back on the bag. Uh, great job there, James Battersby. So I think Reese uh, rushed that one just a tad. But uh, nonetheless, Jaguars get the out. And uh, we'll go to the bottom of the first. Your Jaguars starting lineup. Aiden Burke, shortstop, leading off, followed by Reese Jones, James Battersby, Coleman Gray is your designated hitter this game. Matthew Weeder batting fifth in center field. Jake Jackson Bradley, who closed out the nice uh, first game on the mound nicely, will be playing third base. Evan Bistrich behind the plate, giving Coleman Gray a rest. Sam Waldrop playing right field. And Arnold Bush. And Sam, congratulations to Sam Waldrop and Arnold Bush. Hopefully we'll be interviewing them after the game. They were Game Day Sports Radio, radio players of the game in game one. So typically we don't interview players between games. They need to focus on the next one, but uh, is our philosophy on it. But uh, congratulations. They both kind of kind of spark in the uh, third inning in that lineup. And Arnold Bush, two for three. Sam Waldrop, one for two. Both of them uh, played in a couple of runs and uh, had a couple of RBIs. So uh, congratulations to those two guys for a great first game. Hi, George. Who are you? I'm the guy that doesn't have mustard all over my face. I got a mustard. I got sink pe or pizza. Or what is it? Sneaky pizza? There's some mustard, too. Hey, man, I just care about the game. I care about the broadcast. I don't care about what I look like. I can tell. I know most people can. Leading off for Spade Park, the shortstop, number six, Aiden Burke. All right. See where the wind is uh, gusting out at left field now. Here we go. We just take off in the top of the, ooh, boy. A little more velocity out of this guy, Rick. A little more velocity. I think our guys will like it a little better, maybe. See there, that swing was a little more on time. He missed, but. Definitely seems like what they like. Talking to them after the game, uh, I know some of them definitely did not like the low 70s from the uh, first game. Fly right ball is going to be over to the right side of the field. Right fielder is going to settle up underneath it, and it's the first out. One away brings up Reese Jones. Coming up to the bat. Second base, Reese Jones had a great, Reese great, great at bat there in the sixth inning last game where, you know, just sat and battled, battled, battled the count and then sat on one, turned it for a double down the left field line. I'm telling you like you weren't here, just, but I know your memory's short, Rick. It is. I don't remember much of anything. There's a fastball down the pipe. One ball, no, no balls, one strike. Spain Park here in the bottom of the first, all tied up. Tell you what, thought Richard Moon looked really good in that first inning. Lays off the high one. He did, except the one walk, and you know. But again, you're, you're starting pitcher. You're settling in. Took yeah, well, you, I, took you an inning to settle in. You weren't even here for the first half of the inning. That's all you do is bring up negatives. Curveball in the dirt. Looks like you're the designated broadcaster. Came up with that one on my own too. I'll write that one down so we remember who to give credit for when it wins a uh, award. A pop fly out of play. Rick, we've been in the danger zone a couple times today. What you talking about? Nah, I was a little farther back, but it comes right over the top of us. Yeah, well, don't worry. I'll save you, George. Malone is your pitcher for Northridge. Swing and a miss. That was a good curveball right there. The change of speed really got Reese. It did. 
Wasn't a hard breaker, but it was just after that fastball, and then. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say it didn't have a lot of movement on it, but not just enough to uh, throw off the timing and everything. Yeah, you could say he was finishing his swing as it crossed the plate. You know, so. that might have helped a little bit there too. Might have disguised a little bit as it just as almost a change up an off seam fastball. You know. So yeah, he's trying to overthrow. He's why he's missing so many above their heads, um, getting them up in the eyes and above. So he's really, really wanting to try to uh, show off his velo. When the change of speed is what he really should be worrying about. There it was. Gonna miss. One ball, one strike, two outs here, bottom of the first. Wind is uh, going hard, hard out to left field. Held off of that one. Umpire appeals, but the first base umpire says, no, he didn't go. Wouldn't, I don't even know why he would appeal that. Some umpires do. Well, he didn't even come close to going there. I know, but some of them. But when, like, a, one high school ump appealing to another high school ump, you could actually get a bad call there. I would rather him just not I agree. appeal it. I message. agree. I agree. But then again, you know, some umps refuse to appeal at all. Oh, that's true. Good hard hit ball right field, but it's going to go right to the right fielder, and that'll do it, folks. At the end of the first, we're all tied up here. We have a third umpire here now? Looks like it. Up to bat for Northridge, first baseman number 12, Thomas Wolf. James Clemens drops one to the Houston County Mustangs varsity 14 to one. Be a fly ball out to center field. Nice catch by Matthew Weidra. Not sure if we got that one on camera, folks. Again, that little, we got like two little blind spots out here. Can't get it with the cameras, all of it, but nice, great diving catch there by Matthew Weidra. Well, maybe we'll get better broadcast team one day yeah maybe. set up the cameras better maybe by the way the uh, dh the big six five number 23 for northridge i didn't know if you knew this george but he's an auburn commit really he'll be down there with cole edwards next year cole edwards starting to settle in there a little bit getting some pt a little bit he's uh he got a hit in his first at bat and then his next five he went over Ooh, liked it, Richard Moon. Liked I it. I liked it a lot. It may have been a little bit outside. Like that pitch call, Coach Dunn. Fastball in for a call strike. One and two, one and two. If Coach Smith wasn't feeling so bad, I heard he's really not feeling Fast good. That would we'd remote him in for he could get on broadcast with us. But I think that may, AHSA might frown upon that too. I'd like to see a fastball up here above the zone. I went curveball in the dirt, no chase. 
Oops, no, I'm sorry, that's not a strike, folks. That was a ball. Come back, high pass ball. I tell you, they must have motivated this Northridge. Ooh. Ah, put it right down the pipe. They can't do that. Bounced over. Bounced over. That's going to be a ground rule double. Mm -mm -mm. You know, you hate to see that as well as he had to pitch that batter. Yeah, and then he just put one right down the pipe. And <laughs> at, at two and two, you still got the space to put one at the top of the zone. And he gets under that, pops it up to the left side of the field, most likely. Uh, it's like the other night. I mean, when we see a couple of pitchers, each had one they wish they had back. I think Sean had a curveball he wish he had had back that ended up being a single. And McQueenie had one that, uh, you know, again, a one two great one two pitch, just left it up a little bit in the zone. The guy put it over. You know, it's just one pitch sometimes will be the difference, even though no matter how good you've been pitching. Caldwell now your batter for Northridge. Richard Moon comes set. Another hard hit ball out to over the head of Matthew Weaver. And that it's one bounces good. over. Another ground rule double. Something we didn't used to see with that tall wall out there, but off this uh, rubber infused artificial turf, they are taking large bounces, but uh, they are. That's going to bring a visit from Coach Dunn to the mound. So the, you know something good's going to happen here. Usually when Coach Dunn goes to the mound, we get an out or something happens. Oh, I just realized, too, we have Bistritz uh, behind the... Uh, yeah, you missed all that. We've already talked about that while you were gone. Who's we? Me and whatever fans we have out there. Apparently, we've been getting some nice comments today. But, you know, I told everybody to keep sending them in, and we'll respond to them. And uh, if they have questions, you know, we'll put them on the coaching show. And Maybe everybody will send a question in about what's George's favorite pastime when he's not calling high school baseball. Yeah, whatever. I like that look that Coach Dunn has when we give up a couple of hard hit balls and fast balls that we miss by putting right down the middle. He, he has that look going out there like, what What was that? Yeah. Well, why are we throwing it there? Oh, he definitely gets a few of those. I mean, <laughs> especially, you know, the one I love is when we do a pickoff that he didn't call. You know, I mean, of course, I don't love doing a pickoff, but if it, uh, what's Sam Waldrop's number this year? Four? Four. Well, that wind is gusting out now. Curveball misses up. All right, we're going to pay attention to this runner a second because he's itching to go right now. One ball, one strike, one out. One run here in the second for Northridge. All right, good job by Richard Moon there to keep him close. We're not giving him the ability to get that run and jump they like. Two balls, one strike. A walking jump, I should call it. There's a pop-up, uh, second base. Uh, it looks like Waldrop's gonna call him off. That's a good play there. Excellent play, Sammy W. Yep, Reese Jones was moving back. Sam called him off, came in. That's a good job. Well, and it's an easy, I mean, it's, it's, it's routine as that might normally be for a second baseman with this win today, you definitely want the guy coming in to get it. In my opinion, Rick. I know my opinion doesn't matter too much, but on that one, I think it does. I'm gonna agree with you, George. Your opinion matters that time. Thank you. It only matters when you're right. Yeah. Which is not often. All right, we're back down. I think there should be the number nine hole hitter. It is the third baseman set. He pops there's up. A, it's going to be. There's room for Jackson, Jackson Bradley. Bradley. He's, He's under it. And there is the out. That'll do it. To, uh, to get two ground rule doubles in the inning. Got to hold them, but the Jags fight their way, claw their way out of it. Uh, no pun intended. Gave up one run, one to nothing now for Northridge over Spain Park, going to the bottom of the second. Shout out to Jay Bradford in there, playing a little burning down the house. Jay's doing a good job with the music today. Always does. Well, I know. Cool, baby.
Rick, I did put in. I know I don't. I don't know if you got them all between games, but I got several requests for the sun to stay out. So I made that. Uh, I filed that paperwork to see if we can't make that happen. Well, you did a good job, George. I think everybody here appreciates you for that. Leading off for Spain Park in the bottom of the second inning, the designated hitter, number 23, Coleman Ray. Fastball misses up, 1-0. Fastball misses down, 2-0. Oh. This is where I'd like to see Coleman really sit on just his pitch. Let's count 3-0. 3-0. Oh. Oh. Fastball out over the plate, 2-0. Oh. That was it. He got it, and he was ready to tee off on it, fouled it off. Two balls, one strike. I feel like we'll get a curveball here. No, I think he's going all fastballs on the outside. He just moved his outfield over uh, to the right. So, yep, there was another fastball and popped him up to first base. Sorry, folks, out of the camera range there. Over in foul territory, right uh, in front of the Spain Park dugout, makes the up catch. Matt, center fielder, number three, Matthew Weedra. That's one of those things, though, I saw uh, that after the 2-1 pitch, the coach looked at his outfield and shifted them all over to the right to play the opposite field hit and uh, threw the fastball on the outside part of the plate. Uh, he's been missing high a lot today. Coleman Gray, oh, that's not Coleman Gray anymore. You're talking about Matthew Weedra. Matthew Weedra, nice line drive, double down the, or actually ended up only being a single, but drove in two runs. Ball down. Started off just like the last at bat. First one up, second one down. Maybe the third one will be right down the pipe again. And it was, and Weedra was waiting on it, fouled it off. That's where I like when you got a guy that's overthrowing like this. Get him out of the lineup, put him in the stretch. He pitched much better in the stretch against us when we got guys on base, you know? But I don't know, you just don't see a lot of pitching coaches do that. No, the windup's generally the pitcher's best uh, stuff. He's trying to overthrow it. Man, I understand, but I think up. when you're overthrowing it, sometimes you got too much. Uh, oops. Yeah, it's a way. The reason pitching coaches like the windup is it helps with rhythm, and the the stretch has no it. rhythm. I understand. I understand. I understand. But I'm sitting there saying when you have a guy that's consistently Perfect. overthrowing, my philosophy is take a little bit of the motion right. out of it. Two outs here now. Richard, uh, no, that's not Richard Moon. That, that's Jackson Bradley. That's what I said. Jackson Bradley's up the bat. I thought you said Richard Moon. I did. You're just not going to let me catch you in an air. <laughs> I disagree with everything, George. Okay. Evan Bistritz on deck. Called strike. No balls, two strikes. Maybe he did find his rhythm in the wind up there for you, Ricky. You heard me talking bad about him. And he almost hits the ball. Yeah, when he's trying to go from 82 to 88 in one pitch, he's missing three feet too high. I mean, I just don't like, oops, sorry. I just don't like all that movement with his hands, you know. Two balls, two strikes. I just like, I like a quiet, quiet, quiet motion. Yeah, if he's overthrowing in the windup, he'll overthrow in the stretch too. Because he's trying to get ahead and then trying, he's trying to throw his first pitch at 88 when he can't throw that flat fast. And it's just part of it. Squirts away, nobody on, doesn't matter. All right. Three balls, two strikes. Good at bat here. Make him throw some pitches. I always love when a guy goes from 0-2 to 3-2. Can you see okay? 
could not. A little bit. A lot of glare. And there's a walk. That's a great at bat right there by Jackson Bradley. Jackson Bradley playing some solid baseball right now. I thought he pitched well. Up I did too. First day park, the catcher, number eight, Evan Bistritz. The John Bistritz call for Evan Bistritz at bat. John Bistritz with the all star voice. You're going to send Jackson here? Couldn't mind. Especially with the lefty up. I know, and then if, if, you get, if you get that, I don't understand the show. But. Oh, he just picked him off through behind uh, Jackson. Jack caught Jackson sleeping, coming back to the base. Uh, not not Jackson Bradley style baseball. Yeah, he uh, got, got a nice lead, and then he just put his head down and was walking back to the base, and the uh, catcher caught him. So here's your, uh, we didn't get to do it earlier, but here's your defense uh, lineup. Uh, Evan Bister is behind the plate. Jackson Bradley at third. Aiden Burke at shortstop. Reese Jones at second base. Uh, James Batters be at first. Sam Waldrop out in right field this game again. And uh, Matthew Weedra, center fielder. And Arnold Bush. Bush. Out in left field. Our MVP from game one. Yeah. And come with what we get. The, the, the corners of the outfield were both of them. We gave it to both of them, remember, because they, they, they uh, I mean, they really sparked that offense and got us going there. And uh, one, Arnold was two for three, and uh, Sam was one for two, I think. And uh, they both uh, played a couple of runs. And so, um, and then our Coleman Gray is going to be your designated hitter this game. So there's your Jaguar defensive starting lineup. Spain Park would also like to thank Beefo Brady's, a proud sponsor of Jaguar Baseball and Jaguar Athletics. No place better to be this month with tons and tons and tons of basketball games, March Madness. Um, so uh, if you're looking for a place to get some good TV, some good food, some good sports, and a few libations, please head out to Beefo Brady's as they are a proud sponsor of Spain Park Baseball. Northridge leadoff hitter number five, Mason Elam. Northridge back to the top of their lineup, leadoff man. Elam, the shortstop. Richard Moo coming out for his third inning of work. Like how the uh, I like how Evan held that pitch right there. Got the framed it well. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, watching Coleman and Evan for the last you know eight nine years catching, we'll say this: Evan has always been a phenomenal receiver. I mean, he's a good catcher all around, but it, definitely think he's one of the better uh, receivers in this age group. Northridge, as we start the top of the third, has a one-run lead. Ooh, hard ground ball down foul the left ball. field line, but foul ball. Rick, I do think with some of the rain that we've had, um, the way we've been maintaining the field um, and the turf, I do think the turf's getting a little faster. What do you think? Definitely it's getting faster. I was walking on it yesterday, and uh, while it was pouring rain, oh. Uh, now that one, I thought, you know, that, that's what Nathan Burke right there looked like. He put his knee in that one a little bit to me, did it not to you? No. To me, putting your knee in, it means you actually stick it out. But he just struck. It was part of his stride, and then he just turned. The, the whole. I, I don't know. Dunn's asking the same thing. <laughs> see, I, you see, there's times that we all see things that you don't. I guess. I just. I agree with Coach Dunn on that one. I thought that he uh, definitely stuck his knee out into that one, and you're going to get that call against Aiden Burke a couple weeks ago. I think you got to get it. But as Coach Smith said on the show, that, um, uh, you know, it's a judgment call. Once the umpire makes that judgment call, it's hard to get it overturned. 
Good Coach scoop yeah. by Evan. Yeah, I heard, heard from some more people. Coach Smith may or may not be watching us. He may not want to do the coach show anymore as much as I've been talking about what he tells me. <laughs> but I think it's good information to have. He's very knowledgeable in baseball. And I mean, I don't think people realize how much time these coaches spend behind the scenes. When we sit down and talk sometimes, I mean, they can go by a bat four days later, pitch by pitch, without even looking at it, know exactly what the guy did and where he fouled it off or, you know, what it was or what the pitch was. I mean, they know it all. I mean, they, the amount of studying that goes on behind the scenes to prepare these kids is unbelievable. I don't think unless you do it, you can totally appreciate it or understand it. Right, runner goes. There's a base, or not base hit, I'm sorry, a ground ball to shortstop. Burke makes a play, gets the out at first base. Great play by Aiden. You know, he uh, looked like he bobbled that just a little bit, and uh, but set his feet and made the throw, gets the out. Runner does advance, though. It's kind of a slow roller. He topped it and uh, didn't really get to Aiden real quick, so he had to hurry with it. And Aiden was having to go away from the play with it. Well, so. He was on his way to second to back up the throw, so could have turned out bad, but uh, good job by Aiden. One away now, runner on second base. Oh, Bradovich is up. I learned how to say it, Ricky. Bradovich. Thanks to John Bistrich. There he goes with the run and jump. Man, they're killing us with it. Just tearing us up. As soon, So they're timing up, and Moon looked back at him, stared at him, and then as soon as he turned his head, he started walking to third and then just bolted as soon as Moon picked up his foot. And he was already a third of the way there. So not going to throw guys out like that. Yes, you, no, you are not. Northridge has spent some time on their stealing, which is a good thing to do. They're not a real big team, not a great hitting team, so uh, probably spent a lot of time concentrating on their small ball. Yep. Uh, manufacture some runs, be scrappy. Well, yeah. Really glad that coaches were able to work these games out today. I think after everything happened this week and having to take off Thursday and missing yesterday with the rain, it was good to get back on the field. Ooh, ground Hard ball. Hard hit ball. Back. Their bats have come alive a little bit. They're uh, getting a couple of barrels today uh, in the second game. Yep. I think they may like the uh, pick up and be low. Jack Sanderson. Jack Sanderson. He's the uh, Auburn commit for Northridge. Two to nothing here. Runner on first. Sanderson, the Auburn commit. Did you just say that? I just said that. That's all right. You can copy everything I say. Make you sound smarter. So far here we are in the top of the third, and the North Ridge Jaguars have accumulated as many hits this so far this game as they did the entire last game. So I do agree. I think they're probably seeing a little bit better, and maybe they woke up a little bit. Hopefully uh, Sanderson's bat doesn't wake up, because so far he has not shown why he's an Auburn commit yet today, and I hope he doesn't. The runner goes. Bobbled a little bit, but... Uh, Gets yeah, I think field. he gets him if he doesn't have that stutter step there. That little bobble. What do you call that? Do you call that a strike? How is that a ball? That looked like a he pretty said good. It, he just pointed and said it was down. Yeah, he did. Yeah, well, we do have a 6-5 batter, so. Uh, looked like a pretty good pitch, though. Looked knee high. But this could be a ball. That one's definitely low on outside. Two and one. Steve Holly sitting next to me, focused, very stoic, just zoned in on the game. Either that or he's asleep behind those sunglasses. He's probably asleep. I'm no, I just saw some movement out of him. They didn't hear me. He's got an earpiece in and listening to Ramona. Ramona's doing a great job. If you guys haven't had a chance, make sure to get by the merchandise store. Get some. They got some good Jaguar gear out there, and it's been now that we've had some nicer weather. And uh, Ramona's been doing a great job selling it, and so has several of the other moms who've been working it. But I know Ramona came out and walked the, the stands today, selling some stuff. So uh, you know, part of the proceeds of that go to support Jaguar baseball. Up to bat, number twelve, Thomas Wolf. We're gonna see another Coach Dunn visit. Let's see if I can get my. Uh,
We are going to see some action come out of the bullpen. Looks like it's uh, number 14, Peyton Wood. Is that it? Ricky, you're leaving me hanging here. Is that Peyton Wood coming in? Oh, Caitlin Phillips. Oh, there you go. So Kalen Phillips coming in. Kalen Phillips, a nice, nice outing. Uh, paired with uh, Sean Corey and Connor Langston last week in the end of the perfect game tournament where we ended up getting a victory against, uh, was it Houston, Houston? Anyway, so, huh? Houston. Houston. Anyways, another team that has uh, several state championships under their belt, and the Jaguars played very well against them, and scrappy, and a good, you know, and I think, again, it's, it's that's one thing that's been nice to see this year that and I think it's probably – Pitching change. Nice for, for the, the coaches to hold on a sec. Now the mound for Spade Park, number 14, Kalen Phillips. You know, they've been done a nice job putting the pieces of the puzzle together, not having to have one guy do it all. You know, and as <laughs> you know, Coach Smith told me this week in the show that, yeah, it's nice when you get the pieces right and put them together right. It doesn't always work that way, but so far we've been fortunate. But I think it's, you know, not that the coaching's an easy job, but we have a lot of options. It gives you a lot of opportunities to do different things. And, uh, and uh, I think that's nice this year that we have some of the depth that we have. I agree. And Kalen's a kid who uh, he gets the innings and gets his confidence where it needs to be. He is a very surprising pitcher. Doesn't throw a lot of velo, but he's incredibly smart. Has a high baseball IQ. Not too bad. And uh, 12, Thomas Ward. once he's comfortable, he knows the type of pitcher he is. And uh, he could do a really good job. Yep. Just another one of those guys that uh, the more innings he gets, the better he's going to get. Is Peyton Wood 14 too? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think That's so. That's why, for some reason, I thought when I saw the 14. Nope. Peyton Wood's 15, so just off by one number. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sorry there, Kalen Phillips. There's the runner. They got him. Got him at third, even with the running jump, uh, which is which, which is odd because one thing I was about to say is is uh, over the years coaching Kalen, uh, the one thing he's always struggled with was keeping runners close. What's uh, interesting there has is a you, very slow delivery. So what's interesting there? What do you think happens? Did the, did the runner on first miss a sign? Did that guy the second go on his own? Because I mean, you would think that if you're going to take that steal, you know, you're going both places my guess is this big dude on uh, first Sanderson is not a speedy guy um, yeah you would think he would still go but if you look he's taking about a two-foot lead at first base with a right-handed pitcher on the mound um, just doesn't seem very comfortable on the base path at this moment and look at that lead yeah. there's a fly ball out to center field Weider is under it and that will do it for the top of the third inning and uh, score now two to nothing. Northridge going to the bottom. Well, that's a great, great job, Caleb Phillips. What's he get out of that inning in three pitches? Three pitches. You know, got a little help, nice play. And again, I'm a little, a little surprised that, uh, a little surprised on that steal. First pitch on a new pitcher with a left-handed batter, and I don't necessarily disagree doing it with a right-handed batter, but you know, you give that catcher an open throw down there, you know. Hey, good job by Evan Districts. Uh, made a great throw. Got the ball out quick. I agree. So the Jags get out of it, only down by two as we head here into the bottom of the third inning, which is actually where I uh, things got going for the Jags last game, uh, my friend. So you'll have Bistrich and Waldrop and Bush up to bat. It was Sam Waldrop and uh, Arnold Bush that uh, got things going last uh, game. Let's see if they can't do it again. You know what I really like, George, though, is when we come out and we put up like a four or five spot in the first. <laughs> you know, I hate playing from behind. I do, too. You know, because crappy teams, that usually catches up with you. You can't. You can do it sometimes, but you can't do it all the time. 
you know. But I'll tell you, you know, if you want to blame somebody for jinxing us about that, it's Doug Cole, because we haven't done it since Doug Cole. We put up five on somebody in the first inning, and Doug was talking run rule in the first inning of a game, and we hadn't done that since. Doug's staring you down right now. So Doug Cole, I'm putting the jinx on you on the, the five spot in the first inning. He's watching Leading basketball. Park. He's Leading got the South the Carolina and the, uh, the Mississippi eight, State game on. Evan. Does it even matter? I thought that was all settled up. It always matters, George. It always matters. All right, so Evan Bistrich up. And after a nice throw there to get uh, his pitcher and out. And uh, Caleb Phillips comes in, delivers nicely in relief. First swing, pop fly. It's going to be third baseman's going to call it. Tough catch. Good job by the third baseman there to put that one away. A lot of wind and a gray sky up above him. A little bit of blue up there, but it looks like he was staring into the gray. Up to bat. Right hey, look at that. Our next four, two batters Sam are co-MVPs from game one, Sam Waldrop and Arnold Bush on uh, deck. Talked to Arnold uh, between the games and uh, – Told him, look, when you hit the catcher's mitt, you can't just stand there and pretend like nothing happened. Did he you, say he hit it? Oh, he definitely hit it. There's Sam Walker, hit. hit by pitch again. Second one today. Tell you what, Sam has lived on the base path today. Uh, definitely adding to his own base percentage. Yeah. Up to bat for the Jags. Left fielder. Yeah, no, he, he definitely hit it, but he said he just didn't know what to do. And he's a, kind of a quiet kid. And said, hey, that's one of those, you gotta, he's got to know that you hit it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see how busted up it is? Are you serious? Just to give you guys an idea how, how hard the wind's blowing out here, Steve Holly just reported he set his hot dog down for a second and it blew off the table. You made a dive for it, didn't you? I did not. I didn't see it. If I was there, though, I would have. Well, I mean, look at those flags out in left field. They are straight out. That is a true story, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, late swing, late. yeah. One ball, one strike. Sam Waldrop on first base for the Jaguars. After this, we'll be back to the top of the long order with uh, Aiden Burke on deck. Ooh, must have missed outside. I guess so, because it looked pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, Arnold, sit back on this fastball and tee off on it again. There it was. Called strike, fastball. Low and inside, but it was a fastball. It was. Definitely wasn't the pitch he probably wanted to hit. No, it's a, that's a tough pitch hit. More than likely, that's ground out first base. Or third if he's late. But you are getting a barrel typically on that one. Sam Waldrop goes. He's oh. got to get back. Yeah, I think that's going to be in no man's land. Nope. Left fielder's got plenty of room to catch it. That's the difference in the wind today, Ricky. That is it. All right. Two outs. That'll bring up Aiden Burke. Lead off, man. Jags hitless so far in the game. Need to get these bats going, Ricky. Yes, we do. Reese Jones is your batter on deck. James batters be in the hole. Jags would love to start. What's it called, Ricky? A two-out rally. That's right, two-out rally. That's what scrappy teams do. It's time to get scrappy. I'll tell you what, this is, I'm glad we have the top of the batting order up and mm -hmm. Really like the way that Aiden and uh, Reese have been swinging the bat. Hey, Steve, you still ate the hot dog yet? <laughs> yeah. 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 Regardless. We did get word, ladies and gentlemen, the hot dog did not survive the fall, so it went straight into the trash can. So if you were wondering, so Steve Holly was out of hot dog. Crunchy. Ooh, 
Ooh, fastball comes in, almost hits uh, Aiden. One and one. There goes Waldrop. Ah, and they oh. nailed him. Great throw. Wow, that wasn't even close. Yeah, Burke will be back up uh, in the bottom of the fourth. I'm not sure what to say about that, Ricky. Other day, let's move to the top of the fourth here. Jack trailer two to nothing. Now Steve's got me thinking I might need some nachos. All right, Kalen Phillips back out on the mound for the Jaguars. Did a great job coming in in the last inning. You're going to get to see his, ooh, nice off-speed pitch to start the at-bat. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you, Ricky. Great pitch there, Kalen Phillips called strike. One ball, two strikes. Nice routine out on a hard hit ground ball by Reese Jones. It makes it look easy. And that is what Kalen Phillips brings to you, a fly ball pop-up and ground ball pitcher. You read my mind. I was just going to say he pitches to contact. He know? does. Took a long time over the years to work with Kalen and get see that curveball right there started this batter off. Mm -hmm. not, it's not a huge breaker or anything like that, but the speed difference. As soon as that kid started to swing, he realized how early he was and tried to stop it and then just weak foul ball. Kalen sells it well, too, because he's got that long arm motion sometimes. Yep. Fly ball left field should be, ooh. That wind is going to get it, it out of here. Wow. Yeah. The I, wind assist. That's probably their first home run of the year. I was going to say, that's definitely wind-aided. Huh? Well. 
that's tough, Ricky, because that's normally a routine fly ball. It is. A fastball right in there for a called strike. Yeah, that's normally a routine fly ball, but with 20 mile an hour wind blowing straight out, he couldn't have put it to a better spot. Short, shortest part of the field. I mean, when it left the bat, it looked like it was a routine fly ball. Just yeah. the, got up there in the jet stream. You know, you talk about Kenneth Phillips, and he does, though. He has seemed to pick up a little velocity this year, though, too, with his other stuff. Kalen's the type of guy, if he goes and plays Juco ball after this, will be throwing in the upper 80s when he gets done Juco. He's just a late developer. He's tall. He just has struggled to put on muscle mass. Well, I know he's got an offer to a small Christian college up in Philadelphia that he's considering. Oh, there's a ball hit straight to Arnold Bush, and that'll be an out. Two away now. Sorry, folks, right in the, the blind spot there. We're getting a lot of blind spots today. But it is an out. Nice catch by Arnold Bush. I apologize to all the viewers out there. I'll try to get here and set the cameras up next time. I tell you, man. I had them perfect where they were positioned until, and there's that one. And I try to mark it, but it uh, with the rain and stuff, I had to take everything down. I had a high school uh, baseball coach, it, his favorite saying, but I heard it at least once a practice, once a game. Some make good, some make bad, and some just make excuses. The chain job gets fouled away. Now, Kalen's a true three pitch guy. Fastball misses up. One and two. But I do like that. Love the high above the strike zone. Fastball on the 0 2 count. Ricky, we just got a nice, uh, well, I don't know, maybe you considered a nice little chat in that I just saw, maybe not, that says that we are brutally honest. We are brutally honest. In our broadcast, and I, but I don't know any other way to call the game. Nobody wants to watch you just, you know, suck up to one team all day, right? What are we? What were we brutally honest about? I think the kids' home run, <laughs> saying it was, it was just a oh, routine out. It was. It was. I know. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll always be brutally honest about that. Yeah, so no, but I thought that that's a nice compliment that we got from a fan that's out there watching. You know, you know. Some parents may not like what we have to say from time to time on either side, and uh, but we try to be fair. We try to be honest. At least I do. I don't know about you. No, I mean, I'm not taking anything away from the kid. Uh, you know, we still put the bat on the ball, but it's just not a home run without 20 mile an hour wind oh. straight behind it. Oh, I agree, but you know, both teams are playing it, and it goes down the book as a home run because those are the conditions. Yeah, I mean, I said it in the it's first not like, game. Not I like didn't like think the Coleman's would have been out without the wind blowing behind him either. His was a little bit better hit, though. It was higher. He, he hit this ball higher for sure. Thought it was too high. Yeah, I tell you, it's not like uh, George, you missed it. I'll it was it too up high. For you. It was too high. I know. We, who, who gives a damn? It was out here. What do you uh, mean too high? Too high. I thought the too ball high. was too high. Too high the for too high. It's it gets gone. too high. It gets too high. It gets too high. I'm still worried about the hot dog, man. Yeah, that just bothered you. I can tell. Hot dog down for the count. The runner took it. You see that? Yeah. Ooh, and he gets hit by the pitch. No stolen base because he hit him with the pitch. That's. Mm -mm -mm. Man. Well, I feel, I feel like against a team like this, though, we could definitely get some picks because they are running on first movement. They're, they're walking, 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 run, first movement. We're going to have a Coach Dunn visit. Oh, I mean, he's changing pitchers. Who do you go to? I don't know who's in the bullpen throwing. I got nothing from Kyle Cahalan. Once again, second time today, Kyle. Well, I thought you had a bullpen camp. He, he, I can't go to it, and it's not working real well. well. So that's a lot of help. Well, if you want the honest truth, that cable up there is not the best, and with the wind, it's blowing it, and it's shaking it a little bit, and it's, the, the connection's going in and out. Some make good, some make bad, and some just make excuses, George. Mm -hmm. I'm not making an excuse. It's a fact. We have. We got a Hudson Cahalan signing. No, we don't. Who is it's that? Connor Langston. Oh, is it? 
I can't see, man. I got some. Actually, something did blow my eye, and I haven't been, I haven't been having a hard time seeing for about two innings. I see other offensive linemen on the team. Yeah. Connor Langston in for the Jaguars. Connor's been reliably solid this year, well, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I mean, when you said who do you go to, I was about to say I don't care, but whoever it is, go to somebody that throws a lot of strikes, and Connor is the guy for that. Connor really pitches uh, inside himself. There you go, it? Connor Langston coming into the mound for the Jaguars. Connor's not the guy that uh, we saw earlier for them trying to overthrow. overthrow. You're never going to see an overthrow from Connor, really. He's, uh, mm. But if you look at what he's done the last couple of games, he games he is really getting some confidence in those off speed, his curveballs, and I think that's really helping with his fastball as well. Um, he's been locating very well. He struck out a couple batters looking to finish up that game with some nice curveballs on the inside corner. Um, and I think just his confidence is just really, really, really accelerating right now. Yeah, it, it is. He's throwing his curveball for a strike a lot more. But, you know, Connor has not changed as a pitcher as, far, as long as I've known him for eight years or so. He's always thrown a lot of strikes, always, you know, fir first pitch fastball guy for the most part. Um, works his curve off of his fastball. Right now we're down by three, and uh, it's getting a little bit late in the game, so uh, we're going to have to uh, throw strikes, can't put anybody on, and we got to get our bats rolling. Our bats have not been great today. All right, Connor Langston in for the Jaguars here. Two outs, he inherits runners on first and second. Love a one pitch out right here. Not sure what that was. Aiden Burke was coming off the bag. And maybe just to let him know he's thinking about him a little bit. Nunley, number two hitter, I believe, is at bat for Northridge. Way out ahead of that one, foul ball. Top of the fourth here, Jags trail three to zero. Gets him with a nice little off-speed pitch there. Aiden Burke's going to go to shade the runner at second, keep him, try to keep him a little closer. They have been uh, running on the Jaguar pitching staff and catching staff today. Runner goes, curveball out in front of it. It's going to be to the right side of the field. Tough play. Reese Jones, great catch. Reese Jones, great catch over his shoulder. 
That would look like it was going to fall in between all three of them, but Connor Langston comes in, does his job. Jags get out of it, head to the top of the fourth, or bottom of the fourth, sorry. Be back up to Aiden Burke, Reese Jones, James Battersby are your batters to, as we head to the top of the uh uh, I'm sorry, bottom of the fourth here. Uh, Aiden Burke was at bat when Sam Waldrop was throw, uh, thrown out stealing, so he will return to the plate here in the top of their bottom of the fourth. And now we're back. Start off the bottom of the fourth inning. Aiden Burke up to bat. Takes ball one up up around his eyes. Reese Jones on deck after making the great play over second base with the over the shoulder catch. Ball two, two and oh now. Aiden maybe get us a lead started off here. Nice swing, fouls it straight back, two and one. Two one misses out wide, three and one. Nice take there by Aiden. And there's a nice walk. The leadoff man on. The ball skips over the plate. Number 11, Reese Jones. Foul ball out of play on the first pitch, 0-1 to Reese Jones. the 0-1 delivery to Reese Jones. Fastball misses up and away. 1-1. One one. Oh. 
Last ball in the outside corner gets caught a strike. One and two now to Reese. First time we've had a leadoff man on the bases passing in a while though, Ricky. Yes, and it is good having a base runner with no outs. And we're at the top of the lineup. And tries to overthrow, throw back behind him, and uh, Aiden's back safely. Two, two and two. Two and two. The Jacks need to make something happen here. This is about where we got to go in last game. I think we got it going in the third last game, but. Yeah, because of Sam Waldrop and Arnold Bush, but. Uh, need to get it going here, though. Swing well, and a miss. Second strike out of the game for Reese Jones. Now batting. First baseman, number 18, James Mattersby. That'll probably be the biggest adjustment Reese has for uh, playing up at varsity as young as he is, is uh, some of the upper velos he hasn't seen before. Not that this guy's throwing uh, really hard, but in the low 80s. Yeah. One out here for the, the uh, Jaguars here with uh, James Battersby up. James uh, has been uh, that couple of nice at bats today. 0 for 1 in this game, though. Another throw over. He, he's getting them all over the place over there. Eventually, he's going to get one out to the uh, to the fence or the net, I should say. I don't have a fence over there anymore. That's going to drop for a base hit on the line. He called it foul. He did call it foul. I guess it was. It's hard to tell from here. It looked like it landed right on it, from, but I don't have a great angle. Nobody argued with it, so I'm assuming uh, that was a correct call. There goes the runner. Good throw. Missed the tag. Great throw, great tag attempt there, but uh, the run, the shortstop, second baseman, I say, was coming over so fast, he had to try to reach back and tag from behind and kind of overshot the base. That was fantastic a good slide. throw, though. It was a fantastic slide, too. Again, good slide, slide away from the base. Called strike on the pitch, though. One ball, one strike. The strike was from the uh, that ball. It was called a ball. The strike was the uh, foul ball he hit oh. before that. I thought he called it a strike. I can't see here. When the, the, everybody's great except for Coleman Gray. I don't say anything to him, but Coleman Gray totally blocks me. He blocks me every time. I see a, I see a Jack Straw siding up here. Three balls, one strike here to James Battersby. Coleman Gray on deck. Oh, nice line drive shot by James Batterby. Going to get over the top. A little That's going to score Aiden Burke. He's coming okay. home, and no play cut off by the pitcher. Jags on the board. Finally. Great at bat, James Batterby. Son of a soft line drive over the second baseman's head. The designated hitter, number 23. Need another one of those deep fly balls by Coleman Gray. Some people call that a big fly, right, Ricky? That's right. You think he's going to make a change here? I do believe so. No, no, he doesn't have anybody throwing in the bullpen. So. Oh, he is, though. He give him, him the ball. He's probably going to go with positional player, that would be my uh -huh. guess. And uh, Malone, 49 pitches. Going so. with the center fielder. Numbers for Malone are going to be... Three and a third innings pitch, one hit, one run, one earned, two walks, and two strikeouts. Uh, for the Jaguars so far, you got Richard Moon, two and a third innings, three hits, two runs, two earned, two walks, and a strikeout. Caitlin Phillips uh, gave up two hits, one run, one earned, and Connor Langston, a third of an inning pitch. So uh, no hits, no runs, and no errors, no strikeouts. So, so far in the game, 
Uh, Northridge Jaguars, five hits, re resulting in three runs. And for Spain Park, one hit and one run so far. But the Jags are looking to do make something happen here. In the pitch for Northridge, number three, Logan Caldwell from center field. And into center field goes number seven, Evan Malone. Some questions down to talk to you about that. What? No. Pop fly to the right field. Just, just show a shallow right field for the second baseman. Ends up with the out. Matthew Weidra now comes up. Jaguars trailing three to one here. Two outs here. James Battersby on first base for the Jaguars. Two outs here for Matthew Weidra. Caldwell is your pitcher now for. It's going to be high. George Jack said uh, this kid pitching Logan Caldwell played at TPL, so a lot of these guys, Burke and some of the other TPL guys out here should know him pretty well. I thought I recognized the name. Nice pitch there for the strike. That's going to be uh, one ball, one strike. Ground ball, first base side. It's going to get foul. One ball, two strikes here to, Jay, or to uh, Matthew Weidra. Oh. Ooh. Thought he was going to ring him up there. Yeah. Do Matthew up. was leaning pretty good, though. They're going inside on him. Runner goes. Oh, there Breaks goes the, the bat. bat. They have that broke. Handle came off of it. Wow. Can't say I've ever seen that happen. Not very mm -hmm. often. Tell you what, too, that's a shame, too, he got all that, it looked like. That looked like a good swing. And Leonard, we need a new bat. Well, unfortunate for the Jaguars there, but. Uh, Man, that's bat speed. Well, that'll take us to the end of the fourth there. Jags do get a run, though, and they're trailing now, though, three to one. Connor Langston will come back out for to start the fifth inning.
All right, we're in the top of the fifth now. Northridge leads three to one here. Connor Langston on the mound. Ball one low. Obradovich up at the plate for Northridge. Third ground ball to Aiden Burke. Oh, oh ball. booted it. That's mm. going to be an E6. Up to bat, EH, number 23, Jack So a play he's got to make. Yes, and that's not one he normally uh, bobbles, but uh, his footwork looked good on it. We get a ground ball, double play right here. There's a fly ball out to right field, and that is going to be off the wall. Sam played it perfectly off the wall. Sam did play that very nicely off the wall. Knew where he wasn't going to have a chance for it. Played it really. Almost Coach, gave him a chance. No. Coach Dunn, I just heard uh, getting after. Uh, um, Hudson Cahalen warming up in the bullpen for the Jaguars. I'm not sure you get a switch here just to talk to. So he may, no, with I, some, I, some of these lefties coming up, he may, and he, we got a couple lefties coming up into uh, that. It was Sanderson, the guy that you've been waiting to see something out of today. Yeah. Um, but no, I heard I heard Coach Dunn yelling at uh, Connor there. He, he just kind of trotted over and was standing in between home oh, and yeah. first, just over the line, and he was telling him, you got to get over there because that ball almost got away from third, and that would have gave up another run. And that's twice today now I've seen our pitchers just kind of trot over to the third baseline and not actually hustle to get their back against the dugout to get in position. To be in position and, to field. Yeah, right? and I'm sure that's pretty frustrating for Coach Dunn. Uh, so I know they work on that a lot, and that's something that he expects them to do automatically. He shouldn't have to tell them. Yeah, you, you know, know and that's the thing as pitchers sometimes they'll get pouty after they give up a hard hit and then just want to kind of stand around and not really do the rest of their job. But, you know. You're absolutely right. That's really what that was. You know, more becoming a spectator and frustrated than uh, to finish the play. So. Connor's very coachable and a great kid, though, so he'll uh, he'll make that adjustment. I bet it, we won't see that again. And that's in spite of playing for you. He didn't play for me. I thought he did. No, he was a Miller kid. He played on the team that lost a lot. Yeah, he was a Miller kid, and you were a Bartles and James Weinkohler coach, weren't you? That's right. Nice pitch. Way to battle back there, Connor. Nobody down here. Runners in scoring position on second and third. Wolf is your batter. He's 0 for 2 on the day. Sounds like a wounded goat over there in the Northridge dugout, doesn't it, Ricky? Sounds like those fainting goats. A wounded, fainting goat. Who is out hitting us right now? 6 to 1. No outs, runners on second and third. And there is a blooper to center field, and we're not going to make it. That's going to score one. Runners on the corners, George. Four to one. Coach Dunn's coming in, going to give a uh, first and third signal. Nice no, gone. Yeah. yeah. First and third. So at bat now is Malone. He's one for two on the day. I imagine he's throwing through here because they have a Malone. very slow runner on third base. Uh, Malone was the starting pitcher for Northridge. Calls timeout on the batter.
seven hits, resulting in four runs so far for Northridge. Jags, one lone hit so far in the game. James Battersby, a blue line drive to right field. Ooh. Bistridge tries to frame that, does not get the call. One ball, no strikes. I tell you, somebody over there, the goat over there needs help, Ricky, in that dugout. Do you think you need to go over there and help out? I'm all right with letting the goat fall. Did not send the runner at first base. Currently, Alabama is down three to one to Lipscomb in Tuscaloosa. Auburn's down eight to two to Austin. Are right, we right now? We making a change here with two balls? Yeah, we're making a change here. He's, uh, you know, that's one thing. This philosophy, and they, it's, 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 these coaches, and I guess it's just a credit credit to our pitchers or relievers that come in. I just a lot of some coaches are not comfortable making a pitch mid batter, uh, but both Coach Smith and Coach Dunn do it, and uh, it seems to work out for them. It's just uh, you got to know the mentality of your pitching staff. No, I mean, yeah, I would do it in a heartbeat. I, I, what he was wanting is is to see him bounce back and get ahead of this batter and not get behind. He throws two balls, and uh, that, that was enough. It's time to get him out. They're kind of teeing off on him a little bit. Bring Hudson Kalen in. Bring the lefty. This is a heavy lefty lineup, too. So yeah, well, we're, this, it's time for our RFG advisory pitching change. Welcome back to Jaguar Stadium. For the past 10 years, this place has been like a second home for us, and we are proud to be a part of this community. Last year, I moved my wealth advisory practice, RFG Advisory, to Inverness because we believe that investing goes way beyond the stock market. It's about local support, planning for a better future, and serving our neighbors. So let's enjoy these Jags and their relentless forward progress. Go Jags! Spain Park Jaguar Baseball would also like to thank the Vance Law Firm, Injury Lawyers, Kyle Wheatman, Managing Partner, Motorcycle Big Truck, Car Accidents, the Vance Law Firm, thevancelawfirm.com. That is your source for a injury law legal representation. Uh, the Vance Law Firm is a proud sponsor of Spain Park Jaguar Baseball. So if you're in need of... Uh, Attorney services, please reach out and contact them at thevancelawfirm.com. Sean Corey in the bullpen warming up for the Jaguars. Uh, Hudson, though, is not pitching a well. while. I have a good feeling about this one, though. Uh, Rick Strong. I like the lefty. I like the lefty. This is, uh, I think, half their lineup's lefties. So, Hudson, you know, a lot of it, uh, a lot of the critical for him to get a fast start here. There it is. Good, just nice. like that. So. Two and one. Runners on it's the like corners. Two, it's like what two and one. That's his first pitch. But we talked about that earlier. You forgot your ginkgo biloba again, didn't you? Three balls, one strike again. So who, how does this work? The walk. Who who does the walk go on? 
if it ends up walking. I don't know. I really don't. David, we started with two count. If he walks in, he's walking out there. Which is just what happened. That'll load the bases there with the uh, two pitch walk, or three pitch walk. Odd to see. Let's see, I think I'll be able to get figured out here. Bases loaded. Nobody out here. Caldwell, who is now in at the pitch, is the pitching spot. Played for TPL over the summer, so again, several of their Jaguars are familiar with him. Fouls it away. Is there a zip code on their uh, right sleeve? I don't know. It's five numbers and it starts with a three, so it looks a lot like a zip code. Ooh. Pitch must have just missed a little bit. Yeah, so as it stands, I doesn't, Halen doesn't get credit for facing that batter yet. Okay. So because it's, it starts with the guy that went to it, so the walk does go on to uh, uh, Connor uh, Langston. Connor Langston. Does go on to Connor Langston. So uh, one ball, one strike here. Two balls, one strike, isn't it? You have two balls, one strike. So, and he doesn't even, doesn't even create credit as a uh, batter face there. Interesting. Learn something new every day. That's just like uh, learning the other day from Coach Smith, you know, with the sacrifice bunt, zero outs. Uh, with one out, it's not a, a truly a sacrifice, if I understood that correctly. There's a ground ball. Get the out at home. No play at first, but got the lead runner. Nice play there by uh, Aiden Burke. Caldwell hits into the fielder's choice. Jags get the out. No run scored there, so. Take the 6-2. Put away. Yeah. That's a bat number four, Anthony Messina. I have not really checked it. Do we have a true home plate out there? Or is it a printed home plate on the, the turf? No, it's a true home plate. Okay, it's good. low, though. Well, I was going to say the one thing, because the one thing I, that's the one thing I have not liked about the turf in certain situations is some of these fields where you play where it's the printed home plate, you know, on the field. It's sometimes that's the one that's harder for the catcher to. Yeah. Uh, to And I, I like to be able to get a bounce off a true plate there, you know, at home. I've noticed on artificial turf fields, though, they almost always have the plate set really low below the turf instead of being up even with the top of the turf. Don't love that. Good, good. You don't like that pitch? No, I love that pitch. I, I, don't said, I said I don't like the uh, home plate being down below the I surface. don't either, but I do like having a, an opportunity for the pitcher, the batter to be able to, uh, or the, cat, the catcher to be able to feel it with his foot. Because I have seen some plays where the guy's there, drags him just a little bit, he thinks he's there, you know. Good stop good. by Evan Burke. Oh, Evan Burke. Evan Bistritz. So. One and one's account. Nice. Good pitch, Hudson Cahalen. They are all way out in front of this and swinging over yeah. the top of it. That's nice. It looks like he got a little confidence there too with that pitch. He put it looked like he put it right where he wanted to. Yeah, I think the ball's tailing down and away a little bit. Nice. Great, great, great deal in there, Hudson Kalen. Got the strikeout. Two away now. Good job, Hudson. And he's doing a great job there. He's keeping the ball down on the outside of the plate. Jacks his ball tail away a lot. What's yeah. that? Oh, did it. Jack's caught plenty of bullpens with him and uh, said the ball definitely tails down and away a lot. And I tell you, this is critical. You get this batter. It's the number nine hole hitter now. He has had a decent day. He's one for two, but you don't really want to turn it back to the lineup with bases loaded. No, the way he's giving up another run, you know. If he can throw those balls the same spot he's been throwing them to, he's got a great shot at getting a ground ball to the right side of the field and get us out of this inning with no runs, no more runs given up. Nice pitch. I didn't find it something with the off, you know, some of the off speed, the curveball, the change up here. Yeah, he's uh, he's locating it, and that's you know, 
And again, you can locate that, especially with the first pitch strike. You know, a lot of guys aren't up there looking for that. You know what coaches like this time of year? Guys taking advantage of their opportunities. Yeah, well, absolutely. Look at that, 0-2 right now, got two away. Well, again, I think, you know, two, one, you know, comes down to throwing strikes here. No balls, two strikes here. Cuts and Kahalen coming in with the bases loaded. In, or with, for all intents and purposes, the bases loaded. Ooh, great pitch. I like that. Up high, fastball. Did you like that call, Ricky? I did like that call. I'd like to see a changeup right now on 0-2. So, but down. Man, comes in for down. all intents and purposes. 2-0 count. Then the runner gets on. He's got a bases loaded situation. Has a chance to get out of here with. Not going to say it. Don't want to jinx it. Oh, where did that miss? I think he was set up just a little bit outside, and he threw it right to the mid. It was a great pitch and just a good take by the batter. Ricky, we have had a little shift in the wind here. The wind is actually blowing more towards, it looks like, a right center. Field, right center. Yep. Yeah. That was the changeup, and he got a weak ground ball on it, and we got the play at third base. Great nice play. job, Great Aiden Burke. Had no chance at first, made the play at third. No more oh. runs giving up. Good job, Hudson. Well, you Kahlen. notice, too, how he sat back there a little bit and watched the spin. You know, you could tell that was going to come off with a funky spin, and then they took that spin and took him to third base and uh, took him to third base, and it uh, uh, ended up, uh, you know, make a nice play on it to get the out. And Hudson Kalen, great job coming in and really making sure there was no more damage in that inning. So, yeah, good job, Hudson. Huh? What's he doing? All right, Jackson Bradley going to bring it in here for the Jaguars to lead it off here as we head into the bottom of the fifth inning. Third base. The bottom of the fifth inning here. 10, Jackson Bradley. Called strike one there to Jackson Bradley. Need base runners. Curveball gets called a strike at the uh, laces. Hate that call. That's a total ripoff on the batter. It's an unhittable pitch and it's not in the zone. How do you feel about it really, Ricky? That's exactly how I really feel about it. You would hate to find out that I've actually been holding it in. Everybody can see when you're walking around holding your belly in. <laughs> you walk right into that one. Actually, that's more of a joke for me. I've got the bigger belly. <laughs> oh, 3-2 now, 3-2. I know Jackson had a great at bat last time. I came up and got 0-2 on him quick and then ended up walking, and now he's uh, gone from 0-2. Oh, he struck out. I jinxed him on that one. Way to go. Up to bat for the Jags. The catcher, number eight, Evan Bistritz. All oh, right, jumped to Evan Bistritz. Uh, we're on the bottom of the fifth. Got to stop, start putting something together. Luckily, we're only down by three. We only got one hit on the day, which is unfortunate. Foul oh, ball, strike one. We'll get game changer back up for you in a minute, folks. But uh, we got to kind of. Need some power. That's the only thing I don't like about this adapter is it, it doesn't accept uh, charge and output. So one or the other. 
Sam Waldrop on deck for the Jaguars here. All right, pop fly out. That's going to bring up two outs here for Sam Waldrop. Up to bat, right fielder, number four, Sam Waldrop. Ball high. Arnold Bush on deck. Ball, Ball two. two. Good take there by Sammy W. You all right there, Ricky? You're like man, one of those convulsions over here. I got, I got, I got a here. little chill, man. It's cold out here. Look at Jack over there. That's going to hit me. Nice effort there by Coach Spencer. Jack's over there sitting there thinking about going to putting about 12 chicken breasts and about six bags of white rice into the Instapot and having his meals cooked for the week. Pop fly, it's going to get uh, the wind's probably going to bring it back into the first baseman. Oh. oh, tough play, does not make it happen. So Sammy Waldrop lives to fight another day here. That's the two old, balls, two strikes. That's the old 2019 Arkansas going to lose the College World Series to Oregon State play. Man, you know what you're talking about. You said Doug was up there watching Tennessee and South Carolina or somebody in South Carolina. I mean, Tennessee plays uh, Kentucky today. South Carolina and Mississippi State. Oh, why does he care about that game? It's just on the TV. There's a ball. I think the count now full, three and two. How do we take that on 3-2? Don't know. That's something I can't answer. I don't know either. I mean, I, it's one of those where you feel like, okay, he's definitely throwing a fastball. I guess we were looking for a curveball on 3-2, and uh, but throws one right down the pipe. So here we go. Your S, or your top 25 scoreboard in college basketball today. Alabama takes down Arkansas 92-88 in overtime. Villanova or Creighton leads Villanova here with 3.23 left in the second. South Carolina and Mississippi State tied at 72-17 left in that game. Kansas and Houston just now underway. Your SEC scoreboard. I don't know if there's going to be much more to report on that. Uh, and there is not. Though, none to go. Uh, you have a Texas A&M uh, beats uh, Ole Miss 86 So Sean Corey in the game for the Jaguars. It's amazing he's made it as far as he has, not having any kind of real help from his father. Yeah, whatever you say. <laughs> like Sean, Sean, Sean can come in here and do some damage for us. Sean, Sean's pitched with a lot of confidence this year. Summer did really well for him. You know, they put him in the starting role, and he got to, you know, got to work through some things and get some really good outings. And uh... he's another one. It's critical for him to fast start, you know. Yeah. If he works, starts working from ahead. So. All right, Sean Corey, you're pitching now for the Jaguars. Up to bat for Northridge, the leadoff hitter, number five, Mason Elam. He will face the one, the one, two, three hitters. Fastball misses up, 1 and 0. Oops. Do that.
Ooh, where did that miss? Outside maybe a little bit? Yeah, outside. 3 and 0. There it is. Throw it again. Let him put it in play. There it is, 3-2 now. Way to battle back. What do you come with there, Ricky? Well, with it being his first pitch and he struggled with his first three, I'd love to see a curveball, but I'm not sure if Coach Dunn will call it right here in this situation. But if he could throw it anywhere near the zone, I think he gets a strikeout. Yeah. Went with a fastball, misses up and in. Number 14, Kyle Nunnally. Yeah, I think if he had thrown a couple of curveballs already and been around the zone with them, Coach Dunn would have felt a little more comfortable calling it there. He likes to call the curveball on 3 2. But he has not thrown one yet, so. I like to see the move there to first. I do too. This guy likes to run, and the way that they steal and on their walking run, I think we throw over a few more times probably. Oh, yeah. Love the uh, – see how much quicker we get it down there? Oh. Yeah. Unfortunately, the ball bounced. We didn't quite get the tag down. Still a good throw there by Evan, but it's so much different. You know, Sean has a quick delivery. Uh, the runner was not able to get that great jump. Yeah. Nice slide step there. Yeah. Need to throw some strikes here, though. There's the bunt, straight back to Sean. Looks at third, makes the throw to first, gets the out. Great job by Sean. He wanted the guy going to third, but uh, he had uh, had too good of a jump. He did. He had a good jump on it, and uh, but a good play. Took yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, good decision making. All right. Number eight, Milo Obradovich. What was that? He's trying the curveball. I don't think he's got the curveball today. Well. He's got to work through a few things, but. Good pitch. Fastball swings right over the top of it. Down to the bottom of the zone, one and one. One ball, one strike here. Ooh, I like that pitch. I like that pitch there, Ricky. I do too. That's a good pitch. Uh, didn't get the chase out of it, but uh, still a good pitch. Hardy ground ball down. I, sh I hate to say this, and I'm probably going to catch heat for it. That should have been a catch. I agree. I was, uh, I feel like he was not ready for ball hit his way. I, don't get me wrong, it was hit on the button, but it was, it almost hit him. Yeah, I didn't Coming think it was a bad pitch either. Jack Sanderson. I think what happens there is that some of these, you're not getting some of the bounces we were getting before now that this turf has settled down a little bit, and he just didn't get down on it. Anyway, he hadn't really hit anything hard over there today, and I think that one just caught him sleeping a little bit. This is where you want to see him battle right here. This is the Auburn commit. Sanderson. Runner on second here for. Need to verify that. I'm not sure where the uh, press box crew got that info, but I uh, still find that a little hard to believe. No, 
Nice pitch, Sean. No balls, one strike here. Oh, I, that was not a bad pitch right there. Guy went down and got it. I did not think that was a bad pitch, Ricky. There it is. Yep. It's amazing. Kid went down and just got it. That was a good low knee-high strike on the inside corner, and he just got it just enough and far enough away from Reese Jones. Really? Come out and talk to Sean. I don't know if we got anybody in the bullpen here. All right, uh, we got the uh, conversation over. Coach done talk to the umpire. Wolf up. Can turn double play here. Wolf one for three so far on the day. I think he tries to pick off at first here, just see if you get him leaning. No, you're not with this style of play. You're not going to get him leaning because he gets a one foot lead. He's very uncomfortable. I'm sorry, I'm talking to myself, George. Um, no, he's not going to. There's no reason to throw to first with uh, Sanderson on first. He, his lead's two feet. He, he's extremely uncomfortable in the bases. Pop fly, there should be room. Will it get there? That's a fair ball. Holy the the cow. wind blew it in. It was it was five feet foul. And then They're the not wind. even going to get it. They don't realize it was fair. And got Sanderson at third. I mean, what happened there? Did he? Uh, the ball was so far foul, and then that gust of wind, is a 30-mile-an-hour gust, just blew it back in fair. Uh, uh, you know, they still got to be paying attention to where it lands. It landed uh, six inches inside the fair line or the uh, foul line. That's a uh, very unfortunate. Up to bat. Number seven, Evan Malone. Well, at least you get the out there, though. Yeah. So we did clarify that this Anderson's committed to Auburn as a left handed pitcher. That makes a lot more sense. A 90 mile an hour throwing lefty. Maybe why he's not as comfortable on the bases. That's exactly where I. So I was like, well, you know, I was watching him, and don't get me wrong, uh, he's had a couple of nice hits here in this game, but uh, over the course of the day, he didn't look like an SEC caliber hitter. Yeah. And uh, now it makes a lot more sense. Nice pitch, Sean. Good pitch, yeah. I like it. I love uh, watching him working inside on the righty. Yeah, he's gotten the confidence this year to go do that where years past. Well, I mean, so he can do that now and throw a curveball at his elbow and break it into the zone and get the take or get a swing and miss. And there it was. Got Guy did a nice ball. job fouling it off. I thought that was a pretty good pitch right there. It was a real good pitch. But, yeah, if you, anytime you can get the swing and miss at the inside pitch, you can always come back with a curveball right after that and usually get – O2, I'd come up and in. They're going outside. Up, they're going up. 
It's uh, where he set up. That's where they wanted it. Yeah, Evan was trying to tell him with his glove, uh, I want it up, I want it up. And But regardless, uh, it 0 2, he, at least he put it where he wants it. You know, where that's yeah. where he was trying to put it. Yeah, I think there was a little miscommunication there between where Coach Dunn wanted it and where. Uh, well, that's pretty common because uh, I think Coach Dunn always wants it down and away. Come on, battle here. You got this. Let's go. Rowdy fans making a lot of noise yelling. Weak ground ball to third base. Jackson Bradley makes the throw. Batters be with the pick, and we are out of that inning, but not before giving up two more runs. Well, six to one now, Northridge over Spain Park Jaguars as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Off for the Jags in the bottom Please of the sixth inning. Left fielder number 20, Arnold Bush. Arnold Bush at the plate now for the Jaguars, trailing six to one. Jaguars only have one hit in the game, giving up 10. Swing and a miss. Squares and pulls it back. One ball, one strike here. Don't forget, hang around after this game. I think it'd probably be, we'll probably end up starting a new stream for it just because we're going to have a little bit of time. But 5 o'clock, uh, the JV, or our freshman team will be playing here. One ball, two strikes here to Arnold Bush, the left fielder. Two balls, two strikes. Get game changer back here in a minute, folks. Got to get a little power. Fouls it away. Three balls, two strikes. Ground ball, left side. Third baseman makes a diving stop, but pushes there for the infield base hit. Great at bat, Arnold Bush. Lead off runner on for the Jaguars here as we start in the bottom of the six. Bringing up Aiden Burke. Shortstop. All around baseball player extraordinaire, right? Who, me? No, Aiden Burke. Oh yeah, Aiden too. Aiden was good last night. He was over the house playing poker with the boys, and he cut out of there about 10 o'clock, got home early, curfew. Good night's sleep to play today. 
called strike. I see that uh, Miss Dunn is being ex escorted out by her son, who says it's time to go. Uh, apparently, the, the little one is the one that has the control in that family. Fastball misses up, one and one. I said that with I said that with love. Curveball gets away from him, two and one now. Fouls it away. Good battle there. Two balls, two strikes. What are you looking for here, Ricky? If you, I mean, you got to get something going here. You yeah, know, well, you, I'm putting Bush in motion on this pitch. Are you? Yeah, I think they're going to throw off speed here. With his wheels. Well, their catch has been solid today, though. Well, he's been, well, that's what I'm saying. I'm picking a pitcher. I have a high likelihood of getting a uh, off speed pitch. He got the off-speed pitch, and he roped it. It's going to drop, and that should score Bush. And that's just get uh, Burke to third. He's going to try for – oh, yeah, he's going to be in easy, standing up at third. Nice. Way to hit the ball. There's something going. That's what you were looking for. Some so second hit of the game. Only our third hit. Uh, third hit of the game. Arnold had a nice little infield base hit. Second yeah. baseman, number 11, Reese Jones. Nobody down for Reese Jones coming up to bat here in the bottom of the sixth. Jaguars look to put a little pressure on. That's only their third hit of the game. They trail six to two. Base hit here, though, will cut the lead in half. Ground ball right side of the field. Can't decide who's going to take it. Oh. Does get the out, but Reese Jones does drive the run in. So Jags now six to three. Oops. Up to bat, the first baseman. Number 18, James Battersby. It's only 6'3", folks. The mouse fell. Sorry. Six three. The run does score, but they get the out. Ball, fly ball to right field. A lot Track of wind out there. And he tracks it down. Yeah, I was about to say, though, that one's one. Uh, of course, James always runs them out hard, but yeah. that center fielder really struggled out there today, so... Did a good now job on that one. For the Jaguars, the designated hitter, number 23, Coleman Gray. All right, Coleman Gray now up to bat. Nobody on. Would love to see the Jags get one more run here in this inning. Maybe even more than that. Maddie, did you glue it back together? Good job, buddy. I just told your dad he needs to buy you a new one today. Two balls, no strikes. Matthew Weeder on deck with a new replacement bat after shattering it to splitting it in half. Ricky said it was a defective bat. I said it was just a powerful swing. It's rare you see a one-piece aluminum bat on a jam shot break in half. That's what I'm telling you. It's the superhuman strength that Matthew Weedra brings is to, to the field of the Jaguar Nation there. Ooh, love that call. Skipped in the catcher's mitt, and we get a called strike on it. It's a tough pitch swing out right there. Told me you got a low zone, buddy. You're going to have to protect your shoelaces. Got some fans behind us. Swing and a miss. That's what, that's what you get, though. He calls two balls that are literally skipped off his shoelaces, ball, uh, strikes, and now he's got a swing at it. I he, know. I'm not finding fault with Coleman. Yeah, I know. Just. <laughs> Frustrating for Coleman is he's walking over there and Coach Dunn telling him that ball was low, and it's like he called the same pitch, a strike, the two pitches before it, though. Got James Batters begin to pitch now. Gonna have to fix the camera for the next game. Ooh, geez. 
The wind's starting to blow it. Hey, James. What happened? There we go. James Batters be in to pitch now for Spain Park. Jackson Bradley at third. Jacob Bird at first base. And Andrew Thornton in center. Matthew Weidra moves over to left. Thornton makes the catch on the fly ball pop up behind second base. Got one away. I don't know about you, Ricky, but I saw a lot of white on that catch. I did too. <laughs> I didn't want to bring it out, but yeah. I was actually down by the dugout and I heard one, one of the coaches who will remain nameless go, oh my goodness. Yeah. But it's a catch nonetheless. Well, thanks for ruining my call because I said, nice smooth catch out there by Andrew Thornton. <laughs> it was smooth. It's just the ball almost came out. Yeah. Hey, man, if you can make it look smooth with the ball almost coming out, you're a good player, right? I guess so. Fastball misses up now, 3-0. and There's a ground ball up the middle. Oh, it took a bounce right off of second base and caught Burke. Oh, almost got him a second. Got Burke right in the chest or stomach. Unfortunate, because that went from an out to a double. Burke's going to walk it off. Think that one just uh, popped him in the stomach a little bit. Very unfortunate bounce, though. Very, very unfortunate. Thornton almost got the out at second base, uh, threw to the wrong side of the bag, but if that throw was on the money, he would have been out by a couple of feet. Man on second base, one out here. Number nine hole hitter, Sen, who's one for three on the day, is your batter. Ball misses high and uh, way outside. Who's got what? Nothing. Who's on first? The 24 Atlas. Nice pitch. Good called strike there. One ball, one strike. Evens up the count. 11 hits for Northridge in this game to the three for the Jaguars. So. Ball outside. Two balls, one strike. Good pitch. Must have missed just a touch outside. I think James feels like he should have got that call. We got to watch this runner on second. He looks like he is itching to do his little walking uh, takeoff. He was trying to time it up. There we go. Good job by James to 
I'll ball him back to second base. So just a uh, scoring update for you folks. Uh, ninth grade uh, freshman Jaguars beat Thompson in their first game of their doubleheader today, 11 to one. Brody Smith looks like he was the player of the day. Four innings pitched, three hits, one run. Had three walks and two strikeouts. 52 pitches only though throughout four innings. Uh, but more importantly, three for three at the plate today. Scored three times, had one RBI. Also, I uh, want to congratulate shortstop Holmes for three for three day and two runs scored. Um, and again, Morrison 0 for 0 again on the day with two uh, RBIs. So either some sacrifices in there or uh, some uh, walk some guys in or something. But uh, good day for those three players. Congratulations to them. We will be doing the freshman game at 5 o'clock today, so stick around. Runners on first and second here. One strike to the batter. Elam the leadoff man. Curveball in the dark. Good block by Evan Bistrich. In the walnut, sorry. <laughs> I saw you get I saw you itching to say it. Evan's done a good job back there today. There he goes. And there's a pop-up out to center field. Andrew Thornton's under it, makes the catch, and gets the throw back in. Luckily, the runner at second was taken off. Yeah, they may have tried to tag there. Yep. Don't think it was deep enough for the tag, but might want to. Look at that, number 14, Kyle Nunnery. goes swing and a miss runners advance though one ball one strike definitely the best base stealing team we've seen this year I think to your point that's kind of what they've got to do even though they have hit it this game one ball two strikes runners on second and third top of the seventh here Jags trail six to three Definitely want to uh, you know, whatever. I think that talk that Coach Dunn had with him between innings might have helped get that call because we hadn't been getting it, and uh, that's where he called it on Coleman, and uh, he, he got three in a row, third. or yeah, two in a row on Coleman, and. Uh, Force Coleman to have to swing at that bad pitch, and now we just got it. So good job, Coach yeah. Don. So here we go. We head to the bottom of the seventh. You know, George, it's one of those things I say all the time, man. People don't realize the game's not just one between the lines. It's those little things coaches do, talking to umpires and working, getting those calls and that type of thing. It's a uh, it's a big part of the game that most people don't really ever recognize or see, but. Uh, you know, and that's, again, why, you know, Coach uh, Smith kind of talks to fans and parents and everything before the season every year to remind people, let's don't ride the umpires too bad. They're they're trying and everything. That's because they would much rather go do it in that manner. He goes talk to the umpire in a polite way and just says, hey, man, you know, don't think that's a little bit on the low side on those calls. You know, they're six inches below the zone. And, uh call his attention to it and then make him aware and we get the call. No, no doubt. And I think, uh, you know, I think it's important to see that. And I don't love that call at all. I, what I do like, though, is that if you're going to call it for them, call it for us. If you're going to call it for us, call it for them. 
call it the same way all the time. Consistency, I think, is what coaches, you know, really want out of umpires. If, if you can see the zone right out of the gate. Keep that zone the whole game. Leading off for Spain mm. Park in the bottom of the seventh inning, center fielder number three, Matthew Weidra. Well, we'll have to see how Weidra does here. New bat, new batter. Let's see how he does. Maybe got three outs to get three runs. You know, he's got the Save Boy special up there. Nothing Ball on that right now. Nothing on that. Well, what? I'm sorry. I missed what you said. The Save Boy special. Oh, yeah. yeah. What uh, movie is that from? Yeah, that's from uh, uh, our, my whatever. Uh, the Natural. The Natural. I, I can't, you know, I'm old. I can't think of anything anymore. But no, it's the one the batter, uh, Bat Boy brought to him that he'd yeah, made after for Wonder Boy. Made. After yeah, Wonder, Wonder Boy, Boy could crack. That Roy Hobbs had been hitting with all that time. So, you know. Uh, you same. know what I never understood, though, is how he hit a ball in the lights and then all the other lights blew up. Why don't you go out to Rickwood Field? Because I think that's where they filmed it. I think that, wow, so look at that. Just, you know, the wind's blowing back out there. It just carried. I thought that was going to be a little Texas leaguer. Now batting third baseman, number 10, Jackson Bradley. Well, Ricky. If we don't get four runs here, there will be no Game Day Sports Radio player of the game. We do not give it out on losses, even though some players do have good games. But just uh, you win as a team, you lose as a team. But sometimes we like to recognize those individual efforts on the win, right? Yes, and uh, I'll say right now, honestly, if you ask me if I had to name an MVP at this point, there's hey, not anybody to name. Everybody's done a few. I mean, uh, I, I think the pitching staff's battled some. They've given up some runs. Uh, but the hits, the hits have not been there, and it's tough. To, you know, we had one hit to going into the fifth inning, I believe. And we don't have but three now. Yeah, you aren't going to win many ball games with only three hits. And not giving up 11 hits. No. I mean, and looking at pitches like that. Yeah, we, we've had too many uh, strikeouts looking today. Um, on, on good pitches, you know, I get it if it's a ball that's six inches out of the zone that gets called a strike. You don't really want your batter swinging at that, but that was a good pitch, and that's a couple of them today I've seen where they were just good pitches, and we just didn't pull the trigger. Yep, it did not happen, but uh, what we got here. The pitchers kind of uh, settled in a little bit too. Yeah, Cole was a really good player. He's a good pitcher. Uh, he's kind of all around, does it all. Got a home run today, a couple nice plays in center field. Had some, had some a few rough patches in center field earlier, too. There's a blooper. That may get down. I think it will. That's going to fall for base hit for Evan Bistritz. Hey, how about that two-out rally, man? We're good at that, though. Two-out rally. Ch -ch 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 -ch. If you had a hat on, I'd put it on backwards and inside out for I you. I got a hat. I got one over there. But it's good. Like Apparently, I had to. That was that was a that was a hard sell for Ramona. She just came and said your wife wanted this. I'm gonna Venmo you. I'm gonna send you a reminder. You got to pay me for the hat. And so I didn't even get a chance to say yes or no. Ramona, Ramona, probably the top First apparel salesman of the day here today. And needed to be after Steve lost that hot dog. Andrew Thornton going to bat. Coming to bat here in a minute. Sam Waldrop up. Hagen Holly in to run at uh, first. Let's go, Sammy. Ball inside. Ball inside. Two and oh. Sam Waldrop 0 oh for 1 on the day. There's a call strike. Tell you what, though, uh, Caldwell does a really good job of his. Uh, he does not take much time from once he starts his motion to delivering the ball. He gets it to the plate in a hurry. Does not give our runners time to get a good jump at all. No. Fouls that one away. Going to make it two balls, two strike. Jags down to the last strike here. Interesting day of baseball out here. Kind of been the tail of two games. The Jags kind of turned on. They got the hits in the first game, scored the runs, and uh, put it up at 10 spot themselves. You know, and then kind of the tide 
the kind of flipped here in game two where uh, the Jaguars from Northridge got the hits and uh, put up 11 spots so far. Oh, no, six spots, sorry, 11 hits, sorry. Runner takes ground ball, all. There's a ground ball. Be a tough play. No, we got a nice hop. And that'll, that'll do it, game. folks. All right, Ricky. Well, it'll be Tuesday night. We'll be broadcasting again. It will be senior night, right? That's correct. So everybody John needs Carroll. to come out. Everybody needs to come out and support the seniors Spain here at uh, Spain Park. Um, play John Carroll. Uh, then on Thursday, we're at Thompson. We'll be streaming that one. But more importantly, Saturday the 16th, we got a day. Uh, we got a JV. Uh, uh, varsity doubleheader, and we will be in between those games recognizing uh, the 10-year anniversary of the 2014 championship Jaguar baseball team. So, folks, if you're going to join us for the freshman just because of the time we got between games, I am going to kill this uh, feed, and then we'll start it up again about 20 minutes before the game, uh, the, before, before the 5 o'clock game. And, uh, but it will be the same link and QR code that you're used to using, or you can get, find it on the same channel, Game Day Sports Radio. I'll set it up now, but uh, I'm going to stop this feed, so you'll have to, you know, you have to just click back on to the next one. Uh, it doesn't make sense to uh, keep it running for an hour. Ricky, thanks for joining me today on a Saturday. I know normally you'd just be sleeping in. Sleeping in. <laughs> I got up to wake the sun up this morning. What are you talking about, Ricky? You are so good to be here with you, George. Yeah, Jared Phillips we'll is going to be joining me. And so, anyways, well, thank you for watching Jaguar Baseball here on Game Day Sports Radio. Go Jags!